Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience. Week one is here, and the return of the flagship show of the Pat Mayo Experience. Very little useful content in the week one spread pick, survivor pick, and super lock game preview show. But hey, you'll kick it with us for like two hours. It'll be a hell of a time. I promise you on that. Jeff Feinberg is in studio with me. You've given up golf for the next 17 weeks. This is the slowest week of the year, in my opinion. Like the you're, sum- you're anticipating yes, week one so much. The summer is slow. You're thinking about the days. You see people posting their message, like how many days until. But now that it's here, you know, all the drafts are all last night, tonight. Um, these next four days are as slow as like any. And Thursday night, that's like that's like going to the strip club. It's just a tease. You don't get anything out of you're it. You're going to the wrong strip club, well, sir. I, I don't want to pay for no happy ending. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's just like, whatever. Could, like, watch that on the internet at home and better. Sundays, you know, the first scoop. It's your first bite of of the ice cream sundae. You know, all the brownie, the ice cream, the, the toppings. The Super Bowl is just that little cherry on top that's for people, other people. This is, this Sunday, and then the maybe week, uh, the AFC-NFC championship are the two best Sundays of the year. I, and maybe I, the, the Sundays that actually border football season, because unless your team's in the Super Bowl, like football's over. Yeah, it's, it's a drink. It's a drinking. Yeah. Night, rather than an actual like you're oh, watching fo- with football. people that don't like don't even like football. And that's fine. That's cool. I, I mean, I'm happy to do it. Too. I prefer the commercials during the Super Bowl over the actual football on the field. Yeah, sure. Whatever. But so this is it. This is I'm I'm fired up. Yeah, I'm pretty psyched for week one as well. Like I normally don't. You know me. I don't really get jazzed for things unless it's like bad French accents, but I am pumped up for week one. Every year I get pumped up for week one. You talk to me in week three, I'm like, fuck, I wish football was over. This is <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. I'm working seven days a week. I hate this so much. But week one, it's we've been just talking about the same stuff over yeah. and over. And if you do want to check out some of the same stuff, we do the AFC and NFC win total shows. You can check those out in the description or up on all the feeds. And I got some giveaways for the people too. Would you like to hear about the giveaways? Absolutely. You know, I'm almost at 50,000 Twitter followers. I let's get there. So 50,000 50, morons out there decided to follow me. You included, by the way, but I have a special hundred dollar giveaway plus the regular twenties for this show only. So I'm going to post it to Instagram. I'm going to post a clip of this show. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you best change that at the PME. If you see the Pat and Jeff pick show, video or whatever goes up there. Just give it a heart after you follow me and leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section. If you end up uh, winning that draw, that's a $100 giveaway, but I got other $20 giveaways. It's me, you, and the coin. Well, yeah, me, you, and the coin, and Paul, too. We haven't even introduced everyone yet. You uh, you said the the Pat and Jeff pick show. Yeah, Pat and Jeff pick show, because the other people have not been revealed. I'm doing it at the beginning here. We're also doing this uh, Wednesday. We're going to record on Tuesday evenings throughout the season and release it Wednesday mornings. I know it is less information to work with, but our picks are terrible anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Fair. How about you you digest our show and spread that shit around? Like... You're not giving away an edge by telling people about us. And we could use the traffic. I'm not going to lie to you. But just have it like as a teaser. Like when the real people come out with their picks closer to Sunday, listen to them. But we'll just give you the preview of what you need to know. Talk about it. We'll breeze through it. It's sort of like... We will not breeze through it. It's not a short show. I just sort of mean like golf in that we'll... We'll get you... We'll we'll set the table for you. Yeah, we'll set the table. We'll give you our first leans, but... You might feel a bit different on like Friday and Saturday than you do, you know, Tuesday evening. Yeah, and you don't want to listen to me anyway. So no, you bounce back, bounce back. You here? triple bogeyed the last hole. You're like, going to like, bounce back. I, I, I had a bad year last year, but what else do we got here? The Gups Corner, one and done, or not one and done. Uh, Super, Super seven. seven. You pick seven games against the spread every single week. It's a hundred dollars to enter. We're all playing in it. Gupscorner.com. Registration closes Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. So go get yourself in that. You can come beat us because we're all bad at it. I suck. We're, we're dead money, so 
that's the way it goes. A huge payout to first prize. So I think we're almost up to like 1,500 people in it right now. Uh, the Pat Mayo Experience DraftKings Listeners League. You can find the link in the description of this video or podcast. It was almost full as of Tuesday night. So if you're watching this on like Thursday, it's probably full. But hey, you might as well just go check it out anyway. Um, and if you are concerned about golf, golf will return, just not with Jeff and I during the football season. But I'll have the DraftKings breakdown show, a few bets with different guests every single week. But now is still the time to get the annual membership to FantasyNational.com. Uh, if you like winning, you should love Fantasy National. That's, just, that's about the best pitch I can make for it. Uh, almost over two, $2 million in DraftKings winnings from people uh, at Fantasy National members again this year. I think I got all that covered. Custies came out. People should watch the Custies. Cust Corner 21 came out on Monday. Got plenty of time. You got plenty of stuff to go consume from the Pat Mayo experience. But the two other giveaways that I'm going to do, $20 giveaways, not $100 giveaways. That's just the Instagram one. But if you like this video... Uh, smash the like button, leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section, and tell me your favorite spread for week one. Boom, that easy. The other way to do it is subscribe, rate, and review. Five stars, the Pat Mayo Experience Podcast. Leave your DraftKings handle in the review and just say something nice about the show. Ready to get to the rest of the crew? Let's do it. The Zoo Crew here on the Pat Mayo Experience Wednesdays. We have the third member of the team, the coin winner of the spread pickums last year. He flip, or it flips. It doesn't go by any gender. He's probably won like four out of the five years you've done this. Well, I've only been doing it for two years yeah. now. But the coin Even won. The, the coin beat us all. But I mean like the proverbial. Well, the whatever. hat wasn't very good. The coin knows its picks because it doesn't watch the games. That's how it <laughs> knows things. Uh, and the fourth member of the team, we got to bring him in from behind the camera. It is Paul Shaughnessy. Paul, we got you a mic this year so you can chime in. Somebody actually wrote on the internet. They, they, they posted a... a uh, not gif a uh, a Photoshop of the coin watching the game. So the jury is still out as to whether the coin watches the games or not. <laughs> well, if people are concerned, it's a 1994 Canadian loony uh, is what we'll be, be flipping home for away or home for, heads for home, tails for away is how the coin makes its picks. But I guess we're finally down like the the calling list of everyone on this show. So the fifth member of the team now he's been downgraded. <laughs> To the fifth member, it is Tim Andercust. Tim Andercust. It's not my name. Okay. As we've explained, like you, you, that you are classic Tim? TV show credits, though. The no, last he, no, he, no, no, no. We decided he doesn't. Get, <laughs> he, he, at the end of the he, no, credit. he doesn't even get in. He's not even in the opening credits. He's like one of those jabronis that gets like. In like the guest starring in well, the first reel. Yeah. Well, like, you know when you're watching. Um, like a movie on TV, but it's like 20 years after the fact when they're trying to get to the next movie and they speed uh, through yeah, the credits. For sure. Tim's name for is just in no there. But Tim, you are now number five in the uh, <laughs> pecking order. That's fine. I still can't finish as badly as you did last year in picks. I mean, he didn't triple bogey 18. He hit it out of bounds on the first tee and then played the wrong ball afterwards. I mean, that's how bad his picks were. <laughs> Here's the thing. Tim and I have been doing this since 2010 it's now. It's the first year he beat The you, first right? year he beat me, and he is, he's pretty fired up about it. But listen. Didn't you even make like a late second half bet, though, that you would catch him? Like, yeah, and yeah. I lost. I almost got there. I had like three really good weeks in a row, and then I had, like a, I had to pick the opposite of him in week 17 in order to come back, and he had a really good week 17. So, alas, I did not. You, you guys were in that, cashed in the one and done. I'm in a pretty good spot right now, sort of on a heater. You're calling that a heater? <laughs> You, you, you've done okay. It's like 120th place in the one and done. Yeah, you won your money back in the one and done, and you beat me, but lost to a coin flipping itself. Or I'm actually flipping it. So maybe I did beat you, because I control the coin. I got here the same way the coin did. I got hot flips, is what I'm doing. No one cares about your no country for old men, pal. Give your head a shake. <laughs> you guys want to get into the games? Let's do it. Yes. Games, Let's do it. Games, 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 games. Let's go to the we, strip club. We got... Thursday night, the Green Bay Pekels against the Chicago Bears. Uh, minus three, the Bears are favored at home. 46 and a half is the over-under. Tim, we'll start with you, as you were the only one who I think picked the over on the Bears during the win total. Tim's also got a lot, like, he's ready to go. Yeah, Tim has already proclaimed, like, eight games week free Week one, month. last year's perceptions for him are going to become realities this week because... For a league where nothing changes overnight, like he'll say in the preview shows, he's very much oh. ready to go for week one. I am. Although I have to say, I don't have a very strong lean in this game. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like the, I'm going to pick the Bears to cover the number, but 
you know, these two teams played last year at the start of the season. The Bears lost in horrific fashion and still managed to win the division and Green Bay didn't even make the playoffs. So, you know, it's not, it's, people like to think a game like this is very determinative, but it, it, it kind of isn't. I just look at it with, you know, as a rule, as we'll say all year on Thursday night, when in doubt, take the home team. Uh, because it's now this is different than most Thursdays. I mean, these teams haven't played since the last preseason game a week ago. So there's been lots of rest. It's not a usual Thursday night, but the bears at home, they should be able to feed off the crowd a little bit. The defense should play fine. Green Bay's offense is not what it used to be. I mean, people think of green Bay as a top tier offense. It is not, it is not as advertised. Once you strip past Rogers and Adams, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty barren. So do not expect a high scoring game. I think the under is, I feel far more com comfortable taking an under in this game than I do the side, but you know, outside of quarterback and maybe wide receiver, uh, the bears are pretty much better at every position. So uh, I'm going to take Chicago. So as we discussed on the NFC win total show, a lot of, not necessarily turnover luck, just a lot of takeaways for the Bears a season ago. I think it was at 36 was the eventual total. It's just an insane number to try to repeat. So you bring that down a little, you lose some turnover luck. Uh, things don't go your way. You don't stay quite as healthy. The strength of schedule is also a bit harder. And let's not forget that Rodgers came back on these guys in the Sunday nighter to kick off week one when yeah. basically Rodgers got hurt and he played hurt the entire season. So I think that Rodgers is going to have a nice bounce back. Just getting rid of Mike McCarthy, I think, is a nice boost, a nice jolt to the offense. And I, Losing Vic Fangio is going to make an impact for the Bears' defense overall. But the biggest thing here is I think the Packers' defense is actually pretty good. That even if they do drop off a little bit, although they should have a better offense than last year, but I kind of agree with Tim that, you know, they might not be the top five offense that we remember, but they can still be like a fringe top 10 offense, that their defense will be markably better. Uh, they can stuff the run, which isn't the most important thing, but I do like their DBs. I think they got some nice size back there, and I'm just still not sold on Mitch Trubisky. In these situations, my goal for this year is in a three-point game that I'm really undecided on, that I don't have a huge takeaway, just pick the better quarterback. Picking the better quarterback, me and the coin, tailing the coin here, taking the Packers plus three on the road. Very tough game. I am with Tim in the sense that if I did have to make maybe <clears throat> a real money play here, uh, it could maybe be on the under of all four options would be my favorite lean. Uh, but the Bears, if Rodgers is healthy, I'll go there for week one. Uh, a healthy Rodgers getting three points. That's pretty attractive. Well, it's actually it's actually like getting nine points, really, with the Packers because the Bears kicker will miss two field goals, whoever that might be. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I think this is a big spot here for Chicago to open the year. A lot of the major media outlets are telling everybody um, how good they are and how ready they are to take, you know, three extra steps. Uh, sort of like the Browns, apparently, according to all the major outlets, are ready to take five steps. 20 steps. Um, <clears throat> so wow. we'll see. They're going to break the record for long jump this year, uh, Cleveland Browns. But, uh, yeah, for, for, for Thursday night, give me the Packers plus the field goal. So three of us on the Packers, Tim on an island by himself with the Chicago Bears. First on, first off. The <laughs> Bears fans on the internet get real triggered if you say that they're not going to be good. I'm not saying they're not going to be good. Just in general, like if you don't pick them to like, if they win this game, Bears fans will be like, see, everyone said the Packers were going to win, but we're going to win the Super Bowl now. Except it'll sound like fatter in my voice because it's Chicago. Okay, I look the at last it, couple I of look, weeks in my Twitter feed has reminded me what football season is like. Oh, it's, a, it's outrageous. It is. I had forgotten. Yeah. Like the golf people are far more kind and, and uh, generous to me. Yeah, well, football is a lot closer to wrestling. People, yeah, it is. It's like watching <laughs> WWF. Yeah. No, but also the people that interact about it like passionately on Twitter. It says the guy with like a Philip Rivers avatar and a Philip Rivers shirt. Philip for Heisman. I don't think he won. No, he didn't. It was a good year, though. I'm trying to remember who won. Tim could look it up. Someone really good, obviously. All right. So we got the strip club out of the way. You spent your 500 bucks. You didn't even get in the champagne room. You didn't get a handy. You got nothing. You got nothing out of it. Let's go to Sunday. This is it. Sunday early slate. You're going to a whorehouse here. You're going to the Bunny Ranch. This is it. This is how we're doing this it. This is it. Atlanta at Minnesota. Minus four, Minnesota at home. 48 is the over-under. I like Minnesota in this game. Uh, I enjoyed, I was just looking back at their season from a year ago to see how they started versus how they ended. And the one thing that I think that we forget a lot is that like their defense is pretty good. And I know Atlanta was so banged up last year and it's really hard to tell where they're going to be at, but we've seen them 
every time a new offensive coordinator comes in that it takes Matt Ryan a little bit to adjust. Having Dirk Cutter back, obviously Matt Ryan's familiar with that system, but maybe not the entire offense will be. I just think that people are sleeping on the Vikings a little bit here. That I think they're pretty good. I don't think they're a great team by any means, but I pick them to be a playoff team. This is a home game for them for a fair amount of points. We know that the Falcons can light it up a little bit on the scoreboard, but will they continue to have the same red zone issues that they've had? Is Devonta Freeman really going to be the the factor that really drives home, or are they just going to go four and out every time they get within one yard of the goal line? I don't know, but... I like Minnesota in this game. And I was thinking back to the year that you actually were off the shows, Cam and I doing it. I used to do those hits with Gabe. I think I picked Minnesota as my super lock seven consecutive weeks at one point, and they they covered seven weeks in a row. I want that Zimmer back. The Zimmer that covers the spread every single week. So I think that's he gets off to a hot start here. Like I said, at home, something to prove with the Vikings after a down year last year. Shove it in Tim's face. I like the Vikings, Tim. I'll follow I'll follow you here and piggyback the Vikings pick. So we seem to be on the same page. I like it. We're seeing the board twice. the same. I don't love this game. The spread does feel fishy. I wish and it was I'm, three and a half. And I'm like sitting there, it's already week one, and I'm thinking, like, oh, they're begging you to take Atlanta. Give me Minnesota. Like I I, I, I and I hate that. I hate that. But but here I am and it's week one and I'll take the home. The home team. So, Tim, I'm on the Vikings. Jeff's on the Vikings. The coin, L coin, on the Vikings as well. Are you going to be an outlier once again? Yeah, the Falcons are on the short list of teams I'm looking at for super locks this week. Uh, you know, they're getting more than a field goal on the road, so the books are telling you that they like Minnesota better. I think that's uh, that's quite silly. I think Atlanta's probably better at most positions. I mean, their quarterback's better. The receiving core is slightly better. They have better they're a better team their defense is not as That's good it. but they have players tim, on their defense tim just tim just ended at the two positions that they might be better at and even well, though they even have probably a they have a premier pass rusher uh, on the defensive side whereas the vikings side has been their money on people who can't rush the passers so you know i i look at these these two teams falcons are a dome team as well so there's no real advantage for minnesota playing at home uh that's that's a saw off and I just, of these two teams, I think the Falcons are the better team. I think if the Falcons can get to 25, the game is over. Because I don't think the Vikings can score 27 on a room team basis. This is a six yards and a, or sorry, three yards and a cloud of dust offense that will be able to hit some guys like feeling open on, on wheel routes and on slants. But this is not a big playoff. This is not a team that's capable of scoring uh, in bunches. We saw it last year. So you no reason to think it's going to happen again. The Falcons defense is healthy. And in fact, I like it so much that, I'm a, I actually cooked up a little five-team money, free money teaser uh, for, for week one. I wasn't sure whether I was going to or not, but the more I looked at the board, I was like, you know what? There's, there's just free money out here this week for those of us <laughs> who, are, who are interested. So we're going to tease the Falcons up to 11. It gets you through a couple of key numbers. It gets you through six, it gets you through 10, it gets you through seven. Uh, I actually think it's a really, really good teaser uh, bet. So we're going to take the Falcons up here. Lifetime record on Tim's free money teasers that he's given out. I went back over the past three years and actually calculated this. He is 5 and 61. Fuck. Because sometimes he gives out two. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> that's I hot. don't know. I believe those numbers. I think he, that, that he's riding a heater, Jeff. <laughs> but yeah, Atlanta plus 11. That's going on your seven point teaser? Yeah, it is. I, I like them a lot this game. Okay, so Tim's on an island by himself. Next game, Baltimore at Miami. This is a real fun one. Is anyone going to watch this game besides Garyon? I'll this watch. Is, your dad, maybe, Tim? Isn't your dad a Dolphins fan? He is, and we have friends who are Dolphins fans. Yeah, but they, I have lots of friends. I have Dolphins a friend fans. who's a Dolphins fan. He's not super concerned uh, about watching DFS the Dolphins. Purposes, for DFS purposes, I'll be watching this game because I think a Dolphin stack is a very interesting play this week. Wait, what? Hold on one second. Let's just get to the line first. But Miami is a seven point fa- or a seven point dog at home. Thirty seven and a half is the over under. Uh, Fitz Magic starting a quarterback. Are you only taking Fitz Magic as a part of a Dolphin yes. stack because he knocked you out of Survivor in Week One for the second consecutive year last year? Not the reason. I just think, as you said, he's either six touchdowns or six interceptions, and so if you hit, you can win with him. He'd be cheap. I actually don't mind a him and a Parker. Uh, mini stack or him Gasecki and Parker. I actually think that's a reasonable play this week. I and would I, think- I would actually, if I was going to play a Fitzpatrick stack, I would not have those two bums in it. I would have Jakeem Grant and Albert Wilson as the two guys. That, that's fair. I, I'm I'm open minded to that. And to go to the game for a second, it's week one. 
Nobody should be a seven point dog at home. I don't care who they are. And I like the Ravens. I think the Ravens make the playoffs. The Ravens are a really good team. I think that's too many points. Uh, I'm going to take the Dolphins just blind this, this, the Dolphins have to be the sharp side in this game. I I can't imagine many sharp betters are going to be lining up to bet the Ravens minus seven on the road. So I, I think you either play the Dolphins or you don't play the game. I'm with Tim. I kind of am with Tim too. And I know oh, that is, that is not, on. not fun to talk about. So I, I, I know what my super luck is. It was never going to be this. I did have a handful. I do have a handful of games that I'm contemplating also betting uh, less than I would bet on my super lock. And I was really tempted to put this game on a game I would bet, but there are just unfortunately too many factors, but for the purposes of this show and needing to pick it, I will pick the dolphins, but I am, I am afraid of, um, you know, what I'm afraid of this game being 20 to nothing for Baltimore. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm the, afraid. The, the, I know I, I'm afraid of some of that stuff no, the, I, I, about a dolphin. Fitz, revolt. Fitzmagic can't go nuts if they lose 20 to nothing, Tim. I'm afraid oh, of a I dolphin. They got to 20 to nothing. Sorry. No, that's sorry. I'm afraid of a dolphin revolt. Like that kind of being real, at least like for the week one part of it. Um, but, but, and, and the fact that, that uh, you know, some maybe uncertainty with. I know they're going to avoid the hurricane, but your your head could be in a different place and with some family and stuff. So that's just, yeah. I I don't know. I wish I had the stones to play Miami plus the touchdown, but for having to pick the game for a pool, maybe even for Super Seven, because I don't have seven games. I'm going to bet this would probably be in there for me to be honest. Yeah, it just it seems like Tim's hits on it. It's a lot of points for a home team in Week One. I think we all agree the Dolphins are really bad. But yeah, absolutely, terrible. absolutely terrible. But if there's one thing that made- they could win this game and still go two and fourteen, like I mean, that- they don't even need to win this game to cover the points. Is the entire thing like how yeah. realistically? Because I we're into week one especially week one and week two, and I think week seventeen are the three best three best weeks to bet underdogs because we actually don't know how any of these teams are. Every yeah, year, you're betting a- your perceptions of last year, last That's year, what and what everyone's talking and about coming into the season. And stuff. So trying to find the one big underdog that wins week one, it was Tampa last year against New Orleans. And as it turned out, Tampa wasn't actually any good. New Orleans was really good. Yeah. Just week one, weird stuff happens. That's Always. why week two, you don't want to overreact to week one and kind of like hammer the underdogs again that you actually like coming into the year. But what does how many points does Miami need to score in this game to cover? 10? Ten. 10, 13. If that's this the case, the bet is under. Sure. I buy that. Like if you pick the Dolphins to cover this seven, you but might you as well. They need to score. I, I think they're capable the of scoring. The game can get like, like silly and, five or 30. and stupid field position. And... Well, let, let's try to co- create a narrative how the Dolphins win this game. Not just cover, but win. Lamar Jackson fumbles four times. He, he really enjoys to fumble. So you create the, a short yeah, the field. Dolphins will find a way to key on. Them. I don't they, know. You, you hold Baltimore to a lot of field goals. So when, even when they're dominating the game, it's like nine, three. Yeah. Like I, that's, and I turn guess a short field answer. into yeah. a cheap touch. And then and, a, 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 a kick return, a fake something. I don't know. A, a, you break one, a Fitz magic bomb. I don't know. Yeah. Like that's why I say Jakeem Grant and Albert Wilson. Cause I think those guys have like game changing ability, at least speed. And like we we saw Albert Wilson last year, like you throw him a bubble screen in space. He can make four guys miss hit the outside. Oh, yeah. and he's and I know I'm it's, I know it's starting him this week. The dolphins are really bad, but they're not Owen 16. Bad. It get, get, it'll be hot. Baltimore will be in their darks. Miami will be in their all whites. And we know that Baltimore is going to run, 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 run. Like people are going to get yes, tired the other out. Part and, of it and that is Miami the is bad. Too. There is the, the play revolt that the that the mainstream football media kind the of. The mainstream fake news media <laughs> talking about a revolt. <laughs> Trust me. I know better than this. <laughs> So uh, you know, I buy it that you know probably they are the the lost souls, the left the souls that are still there that aren't like first or second year players that are still you know just happy for those. I guess everyone's happy for those bi weeklies here in the pros. Let's make it um, a rounded dolphins, the rapists of the sea. Uh, rounded dolphins. You know what? All I know is that for that chalk monkey first week teaser, I will not be putting Baltimore on it. Like yeah, yeah. to that favorites. Get them all down, Seattle, whatever you would do this week. Like, Philly, I Baltimore, Seattle. Yeah. Like, I will not be putting Baltimore on, on my own personal I'm a chalk monkey week one favorites teaser. I would also recommend avoiding this in Survivor. This is Oh, my cl- goodness, yes. Never, ever, ever, ever take a road team when you don't have to. When there are other options or close options with a home team, just take the home team. Avoid road teams at all costs. Now, I, 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 I actually... Hmm. 
I think early in the year, Tim's right about that. I think once you get after, oh, yeah, like, well, eventually week, you get to the point where you have to. No, no, but I mean, like, after week three, week four, once you figure out who some of these teams are, I don't really hate taking a road team. Of course, I would prefer to take the home team, but, yeah. like, if this game was being played in week four and Baltimore was 3-0 and and Miami was 0-3, I'd probably take Baltimore. But we don't know anything yet where this is coming from. Like I said, the Lamar Jackson fumbling problem is a real thing. Like, if they're going to continue to run the ball like they are and not open up this offense, maybe they don't need to open it up against this Dolphins team, knowing they probably only need 15 points to win. But, like, this game was 15 to 10. That's about what I'm projecting here. And if that's the case, then Miami has a shot to win if they're oh, yeah, within a score. So I'll take Miami in the points. Ugh, that's, that's not fun. Anything else to add on this game? No, we spent too long on it, probably. Yeah, that's probably true. Ooh, here's a fun one, Jeff. Let's go Buffalo Bills at the New York Jets unveiling. You know their mascot, Postmaster Ted, is back for his 87th year with the franchise, Tim? Do you have anything that is truthful you'd like to say? or would you? Yeah, like to- I've got a truthful comment. Have the Saskatchewan Rough Riders sued you guys for copying their jerseys yet? First. I like the helmets. I think the helmets are really cool. I don't mind them. I don't mind any of them. Yeah, listen, they're not as nice as the old ones. I'm not going to defend that. Yeah, I like the white sort of trims that the old one had. Yeah, I I did too, but... This is all part of your discussion from the Cuss Corner. Like, they're trying to be new retro with these jerseys. They're they're trying to go back to those, like, early 90s, 80s, like, jerseys yeah. that i remember as a really young yeah kid. so the, the, but the, they're like the best idea them? the best idea for going retro with jerseys is go back to the period of time when jerseys were the absolute worst <laughs> yeah that's the problem you don't want to go back to like the Keyshawn johnson jerseys but they did so the jets are favored by three at home this is now okay. up to 41 in terms of over it was that like 38 and a half for a while yeah there should be a bunch of points scored in this game i, I actually point. agree i think it's gonna be a higher uh, yeah. scoring game than people think buffalo enters with the I better wish i saw that 38 yeah, it was it was out there for like two months, and then no one really wanted to go after it. But I don't know. Is it a home game for Buffalo? Because everyone loves Buffalo and everyone hates the Jets. Who's, Even, the, who's that though? Oh, uh, everyone. Jets fans in particular really hate the Jets. They're very self-loathing. So maybe they'll just cheer for the other team. Is that what happens to? I love this game. This is my um, not including my team. One of my favorite games of the week. I'm so excited for these both of these teams, both of these quarterbacks that have really gone about their roster construction um, differently. So differently. Like you couldn't have gone about it more differently outside of drafting quarterbacks in the first round last year. The Jets pretty much spent money on like two and a half guys and the Bills took all that money and spent it very Patriots like on about like 15 guys. Yeah. uh, To sort of deepen uh, their roster. So I'm so intrigued about both of these teams this year. We got a taste of what, how insufferable Tim is going to be during this game. At least on my private threads during the Notre Dame game. Oh. on Monday when he was, like, having a meltdown in the first half. And then he started, he says, well, Louisville's really good. He blamed biorhythms for a bad first half. He said it was on a school night, so the players were not ready to play on a Monday night. They are like, night. I actually won. I, they won by 18. I had Louisville plus 18 and a half, so that helped out. If but Louisville like, had won or, or it even was exponentially closer, I feel like Tim would have, bl- like, been mad that they have... Like, college football's not supposed to be played on Monday nights. You don't think I was thinking that. You are wrong. I was thinking that and both, oh, my God, we have to play at Georgia in a couple of weeks. That's not going to be good. You're going to get killed. Him, him talking up Louisville, too, about how they're real good was pretty funny. It's like, oh, with, with, no, they're, 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 they're basically a bull team. <laughs> what, did they have two wins last year? Yeah, well, that was last year. They even kept saying on the broadcast about how Louisville – Looked a lot better this year. They had quit last well, year. I would certainly hope so, <laughs> that they're better than the two-win team from last year. You also get up to play the most important team in college football every time they commit. It's like They didn't play Alabama, course. did they? No, they played the University. Oh, they played Clemson. Clemson. I'm sorry. <laughs> sure. Flashes they, in the did play. they play the U? They didn't play a team that goes back to the 19th century in terms, in terms of its history and its uh, success. I mean, if we're talking about success, are we talking about like in the past three decades? Yeah, you beat the playoffs last year, son. Yeah, how did that work out? Whatever. Embarrassingly. Yeah, but then Alabama got blown out. I don't know why we've turned this into a Notre Dame discussion, as fun as this is for me. Uh, I am very, 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 very anxious about this game. You should be, because Buffalo is going to win this game straight up. Buffalo is as good almost as the Jets, but not quite. 
better. It, 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 it comes down to one down. thing: who has the better quarterback? And it's and very clear. Answer, it's very clearly the Bills. But would he not bet Bills versus Jets? He wouldn't. He's, he's a coward. I bet he said he said he show? wasn't sure about the over under on Buffalo at uh, what was it six and a half or seven and a half? I think it's for sure a seven now. When we did it, I think it was six and a half. Yet he picked the Jets to win twelve games. Yeah. Yet he wouldn't make the I season long bet. Eleven games. Because you no, said that Oakland losing, was going to yeah, beat them yeah, yeah. Oh, at I, home. I like Oakland a little bit this year. Uh I think it's going to be very close. Uh, I'm going to take the Jets because I think it's going to be like a field goal. I expect this game to push. I expect this game to be like 27-24 Jets. Uh, it's going to be very closely played. The Jets have slightly more talent than the Bills do, Untrue. but I respect greatly what Buffalo brings to bear on the offensive side and on the defensive side. I'm terrified about our place kicking. I have no confidence about where that's going to go. I certainly hope it doesn't come down to a game winner because my heart just can't take that. I could see this being a bad year for that, but I'm excited. Bell hasn't played all year. This is the first offer in the preseason. This is the first opportunity we get to see Bell out there. Do you get to see those for that receiving core uh, with Sam out there? I expect them to just rain uh, touchdowns in the first drive or two, just because they, I, I think they'll be amped up they, to show the world, you know, everyone's nervous all hyped about the game, but he's got them going up. Rain and touchdowns. He's got them up 14 nothing, but he's worried <laughs> about the game. I don't understand. You know, this. Everybody is hyping up some second round, a uh, second year quarterback who can't stop running his mouth, even though he's accomplished nothing in the pros. Whereas Sam and to his credit, Josh Allen have done it the right way by staying quiet and working hard and developing a far better team. I, I think it's going to be a fun game, an exciting game. Uh, I take Buffalo very, very seriously. And it would not shock me if Buffalo won. It Buffalo's would be... a serious team. We're going to march on them twice in a row. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have 14, 14 out there after nothing. five minutes. Yeah, then, then, then the game is on. On the McDermott defense, I'm just marching well. on their face. There's a chance uh, the Bills have the best defense in the league. It is possible. When, when, I'm not there. I, I wouldn't but, predict them as having it, but if we look at the end of the year and see who has the best defense, the ceiling they, are, they are in the running to okay. be one of those teams. They the have Jets a are ceiling. Not. They have a ceiling that could be incredible. I'll give you that. The Jets the tried to... Like, this game to me is like the is the amuse-bouche before the real opener, which is next week against the Browns. Like That's the game I'm circling. That's the game I want. If you told me they're going to lose this week... Who do the Bills week, play next Browns, week? Who cares? <laughs> I have no idea who the Bills play next week. I'm hopeful for this game, but uh, I'm nervous about this game. And I also don't think it's definitional. Some because, people are saying, yes. you know, one of the- uh, who know who does care who people play next week? Normally, I do worry about look-aheads. Like, I know Minnesota plays Green Bay next week. But for week one, I figure, like, there can't be a look at. Like, it's week one. It's freaking season opener. Let's see. The Bills have the better coach. The Bills have the better defense. They have the better quarterback. They have the better receivers. They have the better offensive line. I can't even think of a spot where the Jets are better. So the Bills clearly cover better this game. Buffalo, Buffalo, better fans. Way better fans. <laughs> better tailgate. Buffalo, Buffalo stays at the Meadowlands and plays the Giants. More, more New York-based. Cap being the capital or uh, closer to the capital, right? Yeah, yeah. Closer to Albany, <laughs> yeah. I think. I actually have no idea how I that assume, geography works. I Western New York is closer to Alabama. Yeah, I, I'm having an assumption there. Although, when I make geography mistakes... People come at you? Yeah. yeah. So remember Fair when, enough. Remember when Tim Wine... I've never up, been there. Remember when Tim... What, what Buffalo? Or no, I'm sad. Albany. Get the wrong leg, Pebble Beach. Don't worry about it. That's more of a Utica expression. But... Monterey. <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought on that. Tim Buffalo. I, I had one. No. Oh, uh, yeah. Remember when Tim whined about the Jets schedule, about how the league was out to get them? They don't leave the Eastern time zone all year. Oh, my God. Thank <laughs> you for NFL bringing that up. control that. No. I'm <laughs> like the, you have the, no breaks. Yeah, but you make all these concessions that you're getting screwed. For all I know, the Raiders are coming back from, like, uh, the Rams the week before. Yeah, they're probably playing them in Australia or something. You know? When the Mexico game gets moved. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Um, I'm going to love this game. Won't be my pick for the big screen. 38 around nothing all my TVs, Buffalo. But I am going to lean with my friend Tim. I think they might just be a little more ready for the day. Jumbo uh, Jets. I don't love it, though, but I'm really excited. I think both teams, if either of them made the playoffs, I am not shocked. Tim, do you, you want to bet this game with me straight up? No points, just straight up winner. No, I do not. What's wrong you with that? you? Because I think Buffalo can totally I only, I picked the it's game. It's 14 to nothing. <laughs> and I I, still I'm giving I you three points. No, I don't want that. I'm, I'm very terrified about this game. I respect <laughs> Buffalo. I'm anxious. Like I'm starting to feel like st- my stomach is starting to turn thinking about it's game, game week, baby. The coin is with me. 
taking the mighty Are let's you in go that, you, buffalo you're just copying the coin this year right? yeah. so far so far yes you should be flipping the coin so he can't see who the coin is uh kansas city at jacksonville all right here we go a lot of the sharps oh i love this game too on the jags plus three and a half at home game total is 52 when I initially thought about this game, the more and more I like Jacksonville, that led me to believe that, because I tried to guess what the line is going to be beforehand, and I thought it was going to be Jags plus six, but this line has been bet down to three and a half now. Like, every bit of sharp money came in and pounded the Jags. That, I think people forget the Chiefs are awesome. And yes, last year, this was a game where Mahomes actually struggled a little bit, and they still beat the shit out of him. So, I like Kansas City on the road to cover the that three was, and a half. I'm going to say this. I feel like that's the fifth time. You're almost getting drunk now. Getting boozed with Jeff week one. When they played last year, that was just, that was very early in the year. Like it was a fourth or fifth week of the year. And Jacksonville was in a bad place. They realized all their magic dust from the year before was gone. Well, they were no longer reverse cursed. I am very high on the Jaguars this year. What kind of high? There are a lot like marijuana high or heroin high somewhere in between. (laughs) Okay. Somewhere. You're on mescaline. Yeah. Somewhere in between. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Now I would have said this before the Jack contract, but there are about four or five guys on that defense that are going to get paid. They got paid like superstar money. And I think it's going to come together. Stability of quarterback. Uh, it's a tough one, but I don't know anything, so I'll side with the Sharps. You're going to side with the Jacksonville Jaguars this week? It'll be a fun game. Plus Another three. hurricane potential. Shouldn't the hurricane be done by then? I don't know how hurricanes work. I don't know. I did Where hear is you it? can't nuke them. Then I did also hear that you can't just have airplanes go drop <laughs> ice on them. <laughs> The air, we got an Air Force. I, I did enjoy that guy. He got, got like, an Air Force. I thought that guy was doing like a Homestyle one of voice for a second. Like I didn't know what was going on. But I, I, I like the Chiefs in this game. I just, it feels like people are kind of sleeping on the Chiefs a little bit. Are they? Because everyone's do. picking them to win the Super Bowl. Are so they what, picking them to win the Super Bowl? Who's not? You told me ESPN picked I'm the not. Chargers. I didn't Tim say, thinks they're going to be garbage. No, hold on, hold on, hold no on. I picked them to be a wild card, but I picked Jacksonville to win. I don't know that any human being picked the Chargers from ESPN. It was their, like, 200,000 times simulation. Yeah, well, Tim picked them to win the Super Bowl. So how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's bad news. But a smart computer formula did also. I think the Jags will be all right this year, and I think that division is far more up for grabs. And and hold on. I I just think in this game, what if Foles is like Foles when he didn't play for Philadelphia? What if he's also bad? I liked him. I like him too. He's fine. I wouldn't have signed him because I think Why you should not? just because I would have just rather drafted a quarterback and you didn't have the opportunity to draft anybody who could start right away. They have a team that can't wait. Like you, you can't. You can't. Like you I kind of agree be, with Tim. And you can't wait, but what's their upside? They're not winning the Super Bowl. And the Chiefs are going Why to the AFC Championship. They? They're game. not that much off from a team that was one fumble two seasons ago going to the Super Bowl. Like, and, and what did we all talk about going into last year based on that defense? That their defense was so unsustainably good that it's going to come back to earth. And what happened? They crashed back to earth. Get but better. they're still a really good defense. Their offense has gotten better. And, I mean, I think they and the Chiefs are far closer than the books. I mean, the, this game on a neutral field would basically be Chiefs by a touchdown. I think that's silly. I, I think they're far closer than this. I, I expect the Jaguars to win the game. So I'm going to take the Jags, and we're going to tease them up to ten and a half. Oh boy! Uh, the second leg of a free money. Uh, you, you, know what, the- you know what? You know what game ruins Tim's seven point teaser? This game. Okay. You want to give Andy Reid eight months to prepare Sorry. for you? You do. But you also give I'm the Jaguars eight months to prepare for that offense. They're not coming out of. There's no surprises this time. Last year we didn't know precisely what Mahomes was bringing, and then week to week you only have a week to prepare for him. Jacksonville has known since April. They have him on the do- up on the tee box week one. Uh, the Jaguars' uh, off- defensive coaches are pretty good, too. Uh, I don't think giving Andy I – mean, as much as I respect Andy Reid, uh, him having the extra time versus the Jaguars having the extra time to prepare for him, I, I think that's that's basically a wash. I, I think the Jags and the Chiefs are should be within about three points of each other on a neutral field, and so you're going to give me four, uh, three and a half in Jacksonville? No, no, no. I, I'm going to take the Jags. I said I expect the Jags to win. I understand the logic behind what you're saying. It actually does make a lot of sense. But I just think that this high-powered offense might be 
too much. And if the problem becomes they hop out to, let's say they have a Jets type start, Jeff. And they just march down the field on two consecutive drives and get up 14 yeah, nothing. Okay. And then you just completely throw off what Jacksonville is actively trying to do. And I don't think they're good enough to come back offensively. I'm picking the Jags. I probably will put real money come the weekend on the don't Jags do it. on this number. What I will not condone is a teaser because it can go bad. Like the, the Chiefs are the team you want to tease against because they can win by forty. That's sort of the point. Like if I'm not I, if about I it. lose, I'll you know I'll eat my medicine. Hopefully, I win some other games. Uh, but I do not want to tease them because the other side of it not being a close game is is not Jacksonville winning by seventeen. It's the other way. Yeah, unless they score like three defensive touchdowns or something like so, that. So yeah, I cannot. I don't condone. I mean, you've done the stats on Tim's teaser. I can't condone them to begin with. But this is that pick in particular. Um, I, I even though I like the Jags, I don't want to get behind. So Jacksonville for Jeff, Tim, and the coin. I am the only one taking Kansas City. Continuing down the slate, the L.A. Rams at. The Carolina Panthers, if one side of a game was super sharp, like the Jags, at least that's where the money's coming in. A lot of the sharp money has come in on Carolina as well. They've been bet down to plus two and a half as home dogs. 49 and a half is the over under. I've been talking about this on the DraftKings show. I talked about this on the ranking show. I don't believe in Gurley long term this year as like a fantasy asset, but I think he goes mental in this game just to kind of skew the narrative that, oh, he was fine all along. And Sean McVay is going to pound that home and just... Getting everyone back healthy. It looks like Cooper Cup is healthy. I like the defense. I think Carolina's improved defensively. I think actually getting Gerald McCoy is a huge boon to them. But I don't trust all three levels of their defense. And Cam's still kind of a question mark right now. I want to see him in, like, full game action. Like, he dealt with that foot injury throughout the preseason. If that even hampers just a minuscule amount, his ability to be mobile and actually take off, if he's hesitant whatsoever, they're cooked. I think he's healthy. Okay. If you think that, then Carolina probably wins this game. Yeah, I like Carolina here. Uh, I don't like the two and a half. The only game I've already bet is Carolina plus the three so far. Uh, If it was three here, it would probably be my super lock. But Uh, I think it's going to go back up to three. I'm I'm, I'm a mental midget when it comes to that sort of peace of mind half point to declare my super lock. Uh, But So we'll see how the show uh, unfolds. But I think uh, the Rams are in for big regression. A big one? In a lot of places. A lot of little ones that might add up to a big one. In the last two times we saw them, really the last three times we saw them, they were anything but impressive. They were lucky to get by Dallas. I mean, very lucky to get by the Saints and then managed to it's put a bad up. spot game too for week one cross country. I, I think Carolina will get them. It's like, I don't know. There was a Rams peaked and they ran out of steam. And I, I don't think we should be treating them like the team that scored 50 points in November. I think they're closer to what they were in January. I'm going to take the Panthers. I think the Panthers will win. Two and a half is not a lot. No, but I said I think it'll I think it'll be three by kickoff or three. I, I think the oh, but I think they win the game. Hands. So as much as I love the three, uh, for the purposes even here, if I think they're going to win the game, I'll just Carolina. I just worry about if the and it, all the things that people talked about towards the end of last year. Tim mentioned it, like the three games they did not look good. Uh, teams are disguising their coverages until Sean McVay, until the helmets turn off and Sean McVay can't tell Jared Goff what to do anymore and what to look for in the play to audible to. They're now leaving that in the hands of Jared Goff, hopefully for their sake. After an offseason of coaching up, maybe they can bridge that gap a little bit and get back to not the f- team that was dropping 50 on everyone, but be a team that averages around like 25, 30 points a game. And I like Carolina a lot last year and then Cam got hurt and they were a disaster after that. So maybe it, but if we talk about like regression from a Rams perspective, doesn't it feel like Christian McCaffrey might regress a little bit? Like, didn't we just see his best season? Maybe, but he, he could regress and still be 95 or 90% of what he was and, and still be a marvelous player. So, so, so does sure. it, but if we're going to say, couldn't that be the same case for the Rams? Like, are they a team that only scores 10 points a game now? No, not 10, but I mean, I think that me. <clears throat> How do I put this? I think both of these teams are worse than people think they are, but that doesn't make them bad teams. Like I think the Rams are a good team, but not a great team. And yeah. I think the Panthers are a mediocre team, not a good team. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm picking the Panthers in this spot just because I think on the road, we, it's a road dog, it's a home dog. I like home dogs. The numbers suggest that home dogs we, uh, cover far more often than they don't. Uh, what, so what, are the, what are the numbers on that? Or is that just you living your truth? 
No, it's not me living. I think it, I think it's long borne out by statistics that home dogs, uh, you know, cover cover at a better clip than than the the road favorites. Okay. It's not, not some novel theory I'm presenting here. No, I I believe you're probably right on that, but I'd like to know what the actual numbers are. Is it like fifty one percent to forty nine percent, or is it like eighty percent to twenty percent? I don't think it's either of those, Barack. You're doing the Barack Obama again thing. Ah, oh, some people I'm, think it's I'm, all. This. I'm just, all I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm asking you what they are. I don't have the numbers at my fingertips. So you just could be wrong about this. I didn't associate anything you said to. No, because Tim gets Tim hears the word Obama, Obama and he gets really triggered. No, it's because he used to have this trick where he would, you know, try to pretend trick. that Already everybody's triggered. all on one side and everybody like. Some people think there should be no guns. Some people think there should be guns. All I asked was, is it a coin flip type of thing or is it a vast majority? And then you're over there getting triggered. God, I hate Obama. He makes me so mad. I, I He's not even president. He makes me so mad all the time. I thought you were doing a rhetorical trick there. I was calling no, you out. I'm just, no, you're not getting called out. You're calling me oh. out. It just shows how triggered you get over this stuff. I don't, you I know what? That. I don't get triggered about anything. Really? What did your wife have to say about the custies, Jeff? Oh, no, nothing about being triggered. She wanted to know why Tim's never on video. It's easier this way. Yeah, that's, a lot that of was the exact answer. A lot of people ask me why I, he's not. That's the exact answer I said. There, there are too many variables, which also side pollinates into your cuss corner 21, um, where you cut the clip of Tim talking about his ability to sort of be a VCR expert. <laughs> Knowing how Tim handles technology <laughs> now, I, I fail to believe that. I, I think he had much more epic failures in trying to record the Golden Girls than successes. But, and he was talking about even like pairing one VCR with another VCR. Now, I guess the saving grace would be there was only like four outlets on the back. There was only di so many different permutations of cords that Listen, could go in. I and remember out. being there, and I'm like going to tape this, and then and then I would do like a trial. Like, okay, I'm doing it, and then I would like do it for two minutes. Then and you then, had to make sure the tracking was on. No, I would like stop the tape for a while. Oh, okay, I guess it works, and I don't know. It's just for like pirate oh, pirating like there, WCW it, and WWF pay per views. That was sort yeah, of yeah, my biggest of it, VCR. I was really good at it. You say like really I could, I I could tape multiple. Like I could tape one thing off another. I got, I got to be really good. But it took a while. Like I could zip through that blue screen where you pick the time and you pick the channel and you pick the end time. I, I was really, really good with that. I, I of course, the, the irony is as soon as I got really, really good at uh, being a VCR, of course, VCRs became passe and no one used them anymore. But for for a brief shining moment, I was really, 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 really savvy with uh, one piece of modern technology. I've been looking. I, you know, I miss VCRs. In some ways, I think we we I wish we'd go back. <laughs> There was something cool about having that stack of tapes, like on a bookshelf, cool. like all the movies that you had and the recordings that you had, like they were tangible. They were real. You could grab them. Now everything is streaming this and disc that. And, and that, that's not me. I, I, I preferred the more tangible sort of like VCR, a VHS cassette. Like I miss the stores that you go to and get a movie for a Friday evening. And I miss... You know the the uh, the visual of it, like DVR, like the, the the spines of DVRs are so thin, like you can't even see what movie it is on the on the on the spine. But like with the VHS, they had like the real cool poster on the front of it, and it was a bigger uh, <laughs> column so you could see what movies you had. And I don't know, there's something for people of my generation, like there's a nostalgia that we've missed not having v VCRs anymore. I understand all things change and we have to change with them, but that doesn't mean we can't for a moment say, you know what. Uh, we, we were better off then in some ways. We've lost something that we can't get back because everyone's going to have to stream their stuff off the fire stick. I would prefer <laughs> to have what we have. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen if like, your like, VCR remote ran out of batteries? Would you even get up or just let it play? Uh, it, it would. I don't ever recall that happening to me. Oh, God. So you didn't use your VCR remote enough that it ran out of batteries over the course of twenty years? Well, it may have, but I never had it run out of batteries. But I mean, then you would just push the buttons on the on the VCR because again, VCRs are quite practical. If you couldn't find your remote, no problem because there was a button with the chevron that said play, and another one that said record, and another one that said stop. 
and another one that said rewind. They were easily, they were very user friendly. Unlike today's technology, where I don't find it user friendly at all. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, by, I, by, by clicking one button where you don't have to get no, up and clicking the other button to hit play. Use to get into CTV or get into whatever you're streaming. Like, I can't remember all the passwords. And like, I'm always trying, and if I'm not on my computer where all my passwords are safe, I have no idea what my password is. It's very inconvenient. I know your Netflix password. How can you not remember it? I gave you my Netflix password. I know, I know. And, I, and I remember it. I only know that one because I have to plug it into the television when I want to watch Netflix on my TV every now and then. Oh, no. See, the move on that is if you... you just auto sort it, right? Yeah, 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 no, if you... Uh, see, Tim doesn't actually. Like, he just well, changes the channel or turns off the TV. If you just back out of it and actually, like, turn it off, then it actually saves your password no, every single time. Channel. What's that? I just changed the channel. Yeah, I know. That's why you have to re-enter your fucking password every time. That was really good. Do you think, like, I'm looking for government funding for a Canadian TV show that I can just, like, throw on some sort of channel. Do you think Tim tackles dated technology and, like, really talks it up? Do you think there's there's anything there, Jeff? Like, here's VCR whiz Tim Andercast. Oh, I don't right. know why that's funny. Like, why is it funny f- that I was able to master a piece of technology we all used for a significant period of time? Yeah, because you're you're <laughs> pining for a piece of antiquated technology that went out of date no, 20 years ago. I found it humorous it because cool I know, st- I know, I know how <laughs> bad you are at other technologies. So I'm... Gr- it was. Are you me. calling him out saying, no, he was not good at VCRs? No, I think he got it over time. It was over his lifetime. Oh, yeah, he clearly, he here. said he figured it out as the... As the Technology he can't figure out how to take out. a screenshot on that, his phone. That's my point. So that was the humor in that he perfected a technology, but the Tim I know can't perfect a technology. That was where I was bringing it up from. Well, we have a question from behind the camera. Yes, Paul. More of a statement than a question. I feel like Tim bragging about how good he is at VCRs may be front runner for most cuss story for uh, next year's cuss Oh, that's interesting. That's, that's so on brand. What do you think? No, the, the most cuss story of the year is him putting Pam, spraying Pam on his steak and frying it. That's because you told me to do it. I didn't tell you to do it. We've been over this. And if I did tell you to do that, you're just blindly <laughs> believing me. I didn't tell you to do that, but somehow you've twisted my words into thinking that was the thing. <laughs> no one thinks that's a thing. Whatever. No, no reasonable oh, person. Best. All right. Oh, here's a fun one. So Obama triggered Tim. Now we get to Baker Mayfield. Also oh, to trigger Tim. Bad. Cleveland are five and a half point favorites at home against the Tennessee Titans. 45 and a half is the over under. I will make this one quick. I will make this one simple. We need the media to get very fired up for the Browns going into this week two game, Tim. So the Browns oh, have I to agree. win. I want it. The Browns have to win this game by 35. So I love the minus five so. and a half. I hope so. I hope they win by 40. I hope they win by 45. I want everyone in the world to be thinking how great the Browns are. So when they get knocked out in Gotham City, people will say, oh, wow, this Jets team's for real. Or more importantly, these Browns were frauds. They were the paper tigers that those with uh, some knowledge said they were. What that would you, what, what, what would, well, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. What would make you happier this year? The Jets being good or the Browns being bad? Oh, the Jets being good. Are you sure? Oh, yes. As much as I despise what the Browns have become, uh, you know, that, please, that's, that's, that's way in the distance. I think this is a very fair number. I think that this is probably where it should be. I think these teams are less than a touchdown in difference. Uh, reluctantly, I will take the Browns in the game. Uh, I think Mariota plays poorly. I think he helped. He, he, if anything, he helped throw them out of this game. The Browns have playmakers in the secondary, which you know makes a big difference. I, I, this is a game where if Cleveland gets up by 10 points, I don't think Tennessee can come back. Uh, I, I really have questions about what the Titans are doing on offense. So, yeah, just make it short and sweet. I'm picking the Browns to win by seven or eight points, something like that. So we'll, we'll p- pick them to cover the number. Well, they do have your main man, Hump Daddy Neva Vomits, Adam Humphreys. You do love him. He is a great DFS play because he'll be cheap. He's, not, he's no Cole Beasley coming into week one. So, Jeff, I'm with Tim. And the way that he kind of mapped out the game is that the Browns do jump out ahead. The Browns' biggest deficiencies are their run defense and their offensive line. Now, maybe Tennessee can generate enough pressure, force Baker into bad decisions and turnovers, and they play a classic Les Titans, muck it up, 20 to 17. Yeah, just crap game that no one likes watching. Every time you're like, every time you flick over, the Browns are punting. 
That's the only thing you ever see from that uh, like, game. But if they do jump up 10 nothing, you can't just run Derrick Henry 35 times, and then you're screwed. So I'll take that scenario over the Titans scenario. Uh, I'm what he- week does Ryan Tannehill start? I'm very anti Mariota. <laughs> Mariota son? I'm very anti him, and he's the reason I'm going to pick Cleveland here, even though really wish I could pick against the Browns because I feel like they're just publicly overvalued um, for a lot of reasons, and I'm excited for the show. Whether they go 11-5 and five or 5-11, and 11, I think it's going to be very entertaining. Either way, I think he sucks at quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I no, I, I do. You knew who had this take before anyone, by the way? Who? Tim, do you remember? Garyan. It was Garyan. Garyan's been on the Mariota Sucks bandwagon since he came into the and league. And oh my God, to think that, um, remember Ch- when my team considered trading Rivers for the pick to pick or him? Or when Chip Kelly was going to send like eight <laughs> years worth of draft capital to trade up and take yeah, Mariota's on? Granted, the health thing, you know, I, but even if he played a healthy set of games, I don't think he's a very good quarterback at this point. Well, someone, well, it, it's it's different. Like, a, it's a different sport, so obviously it's a different comparison. Remember how, like, Mark Pryor was really awesome, but he was always hurt? And they were always, like, weird freak injuries. Yeah, but Mark Pryor but was, eventually that caught up to him, and then he just wasn't the same guy anymore. But, it feels like Mariota's at that point. He had a knee injury. He's had an elbow injury. His funny bone. nerve comp, I don't think the comp is fair because Mark Pryor— well, he was Pryor, the second pick of the draft. Like, he was supposed to be But awesome. Mark Pryor had, a, like, two or three awesome seasons. That's what I'm saying. At the end, that's why the comp's not fair. But, like— Mariota has never Mariota done was that. supposed to be as good as football as Mark Pryor was supposed to be at baseball. Sure. I guess. Um, yeah, it's Pryor and uh, Joe Mauer, I think, was first overall in that Gee, prior Joe draft. Mauer, head and shoulders, Joe Mauer. And uh, Pryor went second. So, yeah, give me the Browns. I think the Browns, this is a big test for them. It's a little – how do I put this? The underlying test for the Browns, in my opinion, is all the attention, let alone all the um, personalities. They are going to be on national TV a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. This is uh, CBS sending Nance and Romo for this one. Okay. Really? Really. That's how much like their behind the scenes metrics tell them the people want the Browns. Good or bad, sort of like me. One of our good golf Twitter buddies, big Browns fan, uh, wanted to bet me a Chargers Browns season win like head to head. And it's not that I don't think the Chargers will be better than them, although maybe it would be close. I'll take that. I'll take the Browns no, over the Chargers. I didn't want to do it because the even though first. One's reverse curse, the other one's I did it. I get it. I get, okay, I get that part as to why you would do it blindly. Or even you might truly believe it without any and underlying factors. But I didn't want to do it because I don't want to pick on... Like, I don't want to cheer against the Browns. As much as I'd be entertained if it goes upside down there, I don't want to cheer against it. Yeah, we're on Team Baker. We want I, yeah, Baker to I'm be here good. For the we story. Want, we're here for the city of Cleveland to have a winning so, football franchise. Between, like, this I'm is not... A, this is a That's because you're a bitter man, too. Again, so Nance is there and Romo's there. It's a big day. It's going to be a big like day in Cleveland. I'm worried because the Titans are a sneaky week one team. You look at like last four or five oh, years. I, I agree. They've done so. And we've been a part of it. We've made some good fun money on the Titans like with some sneaky. They went to Arrowhead maybe two years ago as touchdown underdogs won the game outright. They can do this. And their coach is no joke. He said he'd give up his dick to win a Super Bowl. And I respect a man like that because I'm a psychopath. Must have a small dick. You're not giving up much there. It's very sensible people would be, you know, if you had a huge. I didn't say I do it. Dunk. I just said I respect him. Well, here's the thing. Tennessee is. That's an actual quote. I'm not making that yeah. up. <laughs> and as we talked about in the AFC win total show is that secondary is good. The linebackers are good. The offensive line is good. The defensive line is good. The receiving core is eh. The running backs are it, it good. Just comes it just comes down to the quarterback. But if, if Mariota's actually good and he's healthy. They win this game, and like all of us pick Cleveland. This is the classic spot to fade yeah. us and take the other side. And, and Cleveland getting- is a publicly, f- like, the team that ESPN, much like the yeah. Bears, is like, they're behind. Their clicks are behind the Browns. Oh, yeah, of course. And the Bears. But I think it's good or bad, though. We, like, I don't think good or bad has, is a real story with the Bears. Either they're, if they're good, people will be super into that because so many people bet on them to win. There's a lot of people like Tim out there who just get triggered by the Browns, and the shot and Freud. See, I don't. I feel like it. Tim is is a super, 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 super major, minority of people here, outside of like Steeler, Bengal, and, and Raven fans, who at this point probably like still. I don't. To me, everyone that I know who loves the NFL feels like how we feel that like they just want to see it they and are it, excited for work. it. 
Everyone yeah. feels bad for Cleveland. Yeah, so I, I disagree. I think, like, your hard and true AFC North fans, like, don't, you know, they don't want to cut anyone in their division a break. And I can respect that part of it. But I don't think no, there are many people there with are, There are a huge contingent of people out oh, there okay, that are like, that are like Tim, that get, thing, like, really triggered but by Baker. because of Baker. Yeah. Sorry, you're right. There's probably a bit of that. You're right. I see that on, on Twitter. Like, I don't like that he knows or how to speak. the Colin Coward stuff that... Yeah. Um, I will oh, see now. I'm going to put on my old man hat and yell at the cloud. Okay, yell at it. I will say, which is different than I'll say this. Okay, that in the history of football, and granted, these kids come out and they win now, whether it be any sport. Um, you know, even look at the golfer; like they just can, can win right away. They learned something in college that they didn't learn 15 years ago. But the personality of the Baker Mayfield doesn't. Hasn't won the Super Bowls. What about Joe No, Namath? That doesn't work in football. That was a Super Bowl. Yeah. I said, like, plural. I'm going to say he can't. And listen, I am so on the side of just because it, like, hasn't happened doesn't mean it can't. I think that's the dumbest thing. Because nothing can happen until it happens for a lot of sports fans. And then once it happens, it can always happen. Well, I mean. If that makes any sense. Like, is Tom Brady an outlier? Because he's the only one who does the TB12 well, diet who's see, won the Super Bowl? Now, Tom Brady is sort of the ruining this argument in the sense that he takes up so many slots in the, who's going to the Super Bowl that there, it's impossible for other personalities to break through and get there. But still, just his, history tells us that guy, that, that guy, that leader, Calm, cool, not sort of, you know. How, okay, you, you can say that. But how many other, besides like Manziel, how many other quarterbacks of this personality type have we actually ever seen? None, really. Even Philip Rivers gets criticized for being like too passionate. Yeah, never won a field. Super Bowl, so no one like him can ever do it. Except no, for but I'm just saying, like, I'm saying, I, I don't really knock Baker. I love Philip Rivers. Philip he he plays with. Himself. No, I That's get it. Different. Philip. Philip will you, never... You, you just think that Baker makes it all hold about on, Hold on, hold on. Because, no, because you want to live your truth. That's what you see in Philip it. Philip will never put himself out there on a Monday through Saturday like Baker will. On the three hours during Wait, the game... See, Jeff, during the Baker. three hours during the game on Sunday, Philip can very much be Baker. Except he'd never grab his nuts and his swearing would be like if Ned Flanders swore. So it'd be very but, different. But you see, Jeff, Baker Mayfield shotgunned that beer for the team, not for himself. Not for attention. That was he, on a freaking jumbotron. He did it because Aaron Rodgers a pussy, and that's the thing to do. What do you mean? All you're about like himself. You're such an Will, idiot. It, it, he has the self. He, no, he's self aware enough to know this is this like, what the people know, want. This is a no brainer, yeah, man. Like, I what? can do this. Let's do it. Let's go. Think about the beating that Rodgers <laughs> took. <laughs> What's gonna, what he, you, he didn't what? want it because Rodgers didn't want to like chug a beer at a basketball game. Not a week full of criticism. Like he, he, a week listen, full of it. There are and, things he deserves criticism for. That is maybe fairly, fairly, or at least old man in the sky can fairly feel that Baker's doing something wrong. That is the that's so unfair because there are real things you can actually maybe go at him for, but you lose everybody when you attack him for shit like that. For Ooh. immaturity? Okay, well, then I plead guilty. He's a very immature person. Just because yeah. you can't chug a beer and that makes you feel bad about yourself, don't take it no. out on Baker. Not go, show, uh, go show. Tell Baker, you know, what size kegs you drink. Yeah, well, I saw Baker doing a cartwheel, unlike Tim. <laughs> Fine, Tim you know what? We so okay, let's say let's say it cut to him. He has the beer in his hand and he sits there stone faced and doesn't do anything. He takes more heat for that than what he did. The guy can't win because no matter what he had done, Tim, you would have criticized whatever he done because you don't like him. That's not true. I would not have criticized him if he had like waved to the fans and like had a sip of his beer or whatever. Like that would have been fine. But instead, he acted like he was in a frat party instead of he acted like he was having fun at a sporting party. event, which he was doing. He wasn't. It's, it's, not, it's not. It's not like he was. It's fun. not like he was. Un, it is fun. It's not like he was on the field under center, uh, shotgunning a beer in between plays. It was that's all what this was. about him. He lives in the esteems of others. And uh, as Jeff said, those types of people do not thrive at the quarterback position. And so we shall see. We'll see. Next game, Washington at Philadelphia. Nine and a half for the Eagles. 
46 is the game total. I don't see any way that Washington wins this game, which starts to lead me to leave. I mean, I should probably take them on the money line plus 325. One of these really shitty teams that we, we think are shitty. You got to protect your leave. eliminator, maybe. I'll, I'll probably take the Eagles in my eliminator. There's not. I don't think the Eagles, spread is high enough. Eagles, Seattle are the two you have to look at. Right? I don't think the spread is high enough. Uh, sometimes these division games can get close. I'm not expecting it here. Uh, maybe this is just my big picture thinking and expecting so much from the Eagles this year and having them winning the NFC and expecting so little from the Redskins that I could just easily blindly in a week one game say, sure, I'll lay nine and a half. Should be 11 or 12. I'm going to take Washington against the spread. You mentioned it, division game. It's good enough for me. It's almost 10 points. This will go up to 10 by the time Sunday goes around. It might even get higher than that. 10 I, I saw I was have... the most common um, point differential in, in NFL recently. Really? Yeah. I guess that's, that's why we talk about key numbers when you're doing teasers and stuff like that. No, but 10 it's is a key number. number. Like, like if something's at 10 and a half, yeah. like 10 is a key number. It, is. it ends up being a much difference maker than, than when we overreact to three or three and a half. Like 10 is, it seems to be the most key number in in sports, although I shouldn't say it's the most key number from betting because it's just, it's unrelated to spreads. It's the most common finishing total. Finishing score differential is ten points in in football. Now is that an average or that's the one that happens most often? I believe that second part. There. Okay, it's so, the mode, not the median. Yeah, Philly for so me. So you're taking Philly minus nine and a half. I guess for Washington, there's one of two ways this works. I think their defense is better than people are led to believe. Like, I don't think that's bad. Not having Trent but, Williams. But their really defensive hurts. line is so strong and Washington's strength being the running game. Matt, like it's just not a good matchup even for Washington. But did we get to a point here where like Case Keenum can do something? Yeah, we've seen it. Sure. Like, this feels like Chris Thompson scores an 80 yard touchdown in the fourth quarter after the game is out of reach. And all of a sudden it's a nine point game. That would annoy. That would be annoying. That's how it feels to me at least. So I'm taking Washington, Tim. Yeah, I don't like laying that many points with a divisional team. I will I nevertheless take Philly, but I wouldn't go near them for, for suicide. Uh, I no, think no, Washington no. Is, is indeed live because it's a divisional game. It's week one. It's a ton of points for a team to be laying a divisional opponent. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, we haven't seen Wentz play since he got hurt the last time. You know, there's inevitably going to be some rust when the real live bullets start flying that he has to knock off. Yeah, I think it's a dangerous one. I'm going to take Philly with a, with great trepidation. No, no, no. I would not consider them for suicide. I like that you picked them to cover nine and a half points, yet you wouldn't consider them for this. Only because I can't, I can't bring myself to take Washington at nine and a half. At ten, I would. At ten and a half, I would. But at nine and a half, I would take I would take Philly. But I don't love it. Uh, right. I'm not feeling strong about it. All right, you guys are taking Philly. The coin and I are taking Washington. Late games. Cincinnati at Seattle. Mine and a half, mine, minus nine and a half again for the Seahawks. 44 and a half uh, is the total here. The Bengals just re-signed Gio Bernard to a two-year deal, and he's now like the seventh highest paid running back in the league or something. It's really weird. Really Good bizarre, really bizarre move on their part. But no A.J. Green, obviously. They're starting Tyler Boyd, Damian Willis, and John already banged up John Ross on the outside. I'm just my same take as Philly. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Seattle to cover this yeah, one. This one yeah. Seattle's Agreed, gonna be my... and they're the third end of a five team free money uh teaser. We're gonna tease them down to two, two and a half. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I think if well unfortunately I think I, I could be involved in the spiciness, but to me the spiciness could come from Miami. I expect uh, Seattle to have no no trouble no. here. Hopefully uh -oh. not, because I mean they're gonna be my survivor pick. They're going to be everywhere. It probably feels safer than not Washington. Fine. You take out the division factor. So you're not using Philly or Seattle? I, I hate you so much. Nope. Oh, my God. I hate you so much. You know, we will not should, be should friends. Should I bet all of them? Because, I mean, he's, I already don't he's like going to pick game. a team. I have he's so going many... to pick a team in the Survivor that is going to be like, I might be on the other side as my super lock. Whatever. So are we all taking Seattle? You want. I, I once went a whole season with a perfect Survivor season. So I think you I suck. know what I'm doing. Um, so we, we're all taking Seattle? Yeah, I am. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, I'm taking Seattle. Yeah, and the coin is too. All right. Indianapolis at Jeff, your Los Angeles Chargers. Six and a half is the spread. Down from seven, uh, as it initially was after Andrew Luck went out. 44 and a half is the game total. Russell Okun, not playing. That's not good for the offensive line. It's going to be a lot of passing to the running backs, I would think, or maybe even holding Hunter Henry back in order to block to make sure that you can buy some time. Because we know that 
the Colts defense pretty good. They can get to the passer. We know that they can run the ball pretty effectively. So I really like the Colts in this game, plus six and a half. I think this is a slower pace game. I think it's a game that's very close. And I think we forget that the Colts, although they weren't good two years ago without Andrew Luck, one of the reasons to really like them going into last year wasn't just the huge upgrade at quarterback getting Luck back over Jacoby Brissett, but Tim's having a melting down over there. But remember the Colts like led every game at halftime and then they just well, blew, the they blew it like, in the fourth quarter? The last time... I picked the, the, the game that gave me my perfect season in, su- in suicide was when I picked the Jaguars against Jacoby Brissett's Colts. And so I have another opportunity to continue my streak by betting against Jacoby Brissett, like the stars were lining. In all seriousness, he, he's been the star. He, he's not that good. And like the Chargers are good. And like, I think this lo- line is too low. I think six and a half is kind of silly. I think the Chargers at home should be a seven and a half or an eight point favorite. Is Akung there? No, but it's not like the Colts have like the world's greatest sack artists that are coming in off the edge. The Chargers are better pound for pound at pretty much every position. Uh, it, it, offensive line is really this good. Is just replay Colts. his argument from the Patriot game in the playoffs. Yeah. I think better the Chargers in every are position. <laughs> pretty much constructed to be the it's best not, modern just... football team. In 2019, if you could assemble, like, out of Lego blocks, the team you wanted in the NFL, it would look a lot like the Chargers. Thank you. So I'm picking the Chargers to win the game, and I am picking them as uh, Uh, as my suicide pick. Thank you. I'm crying. Yes, this is fantastic, Jeff. But I'm not going to tease so them. That just they're, not on, they're not on the teaser because I can't tease. I won't tease. Can't, w- won't tease them. I hate you. Su- tease super lock eliminator a, will not. A, not you're super you're such no, a no, fucking coward. Team. Oh, you're taking them as you've picked one team on this slate in week one to outright win a game for Survivor. You can tease them to a spot where all they would need to do is win. Yet you won't do that. I won't tease through zero. I won't waste that point. <laughs> you, but you'll take the Chargers to be your. Oh my god! My what, okay, hold on. Not, oh. What if it's seven by game time? If it's seven, then at that would point, you advise someone seven? to make it a six? Like, if people yeah, are listening actually. on Saturday yes, night and the line is yes, seven, make it yes, a six game teaser. Can you ask at your, that, like? At that point, I would advise such a thing. I have no problem with that. Uh, I mean, I'm taking the game later on from pick them to seven, so I have no problem taking a game from seven to pick them. But I don't like teasing through zero. I think it's a waste. Uh, you, if you're going to you tease, used to tease through zero all the time i used to get mad at you did you not and, listen to the record that he gave out of my t- of my picks you know i've learned my lesson yeah. here's the thing right Min- minus minus 380 and nine thousand. so you think teasers it's just the games bets, you tease through right? zero that that cost you that record like teasers if you took those games to begin with so horrible bets bet, so you want to maximize all the the leverage you have against the house by not making unnecessarily dumb mistakes. But, 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 but this, but if you, w- w- with the way that you maximize you've talk- your leverage by not making the teaser and betting all no. those games single on their or numbers. maximize. If, if you're going to play the teaser, maximize your leverage by actually putting, if you have a super confident game. Yes. On it. If it's yeah. the most confident game that you have, put it on the fucking teaser. Okay, I'm going to no, be, I'm going to be, I am going to be quick as it pertains to talking about this game. Cause I don't have a lot to say about the game, but I got things to say about the season. <laughs> Jacoby Brissett is is severely underrated. I, I don't think he's who's as, better, Foles or Brissett. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think he's nearly as jabroni as so many people are blindly making it out to be. I am scared shitless of this game. I there's a bit of relief. Sure, Andrew Luck is not playing, but I think the number is so it's high. Big. It's big. It is way too high. It is so egregiously. Hi, and if this wasn't the Chargers involved, you know how much I love betting a good team in the first game without the quarterback. Plus 235 on the money line. I love that angle so much. Good team. Good team. And that Colts roster is real good. Well, hold on a second. Just to kind of piggyback on your Jacoby Brissett point, when we saw him two years ago and they were in all these games, the biggest deficiency that they had was this offensive line. Now the offensive line is good. So now I am deathly afraid of that this, like, last two and a half weeks to go into the season is essentially, like, us against the world for the Colts. I think you are so lucky if you have the Colts maybe on a week three, four, or five when they're like momentum of we can do it. Like you even see in the NBA, the superstars out for a gate. Like they just play well. 
but like by game like three, four, five minutes, we are fucked. <laughs> How many touchdowns do you think the Kobe percent? And it, and it hits them. So, uh, no, this is a bad game. Like, I'm not saying we'd be better off if Andrew Luck was playing, but, but, um, it's not as bad as it's not as three dire months as ago. The Chargers that averaged less than one touchdown pass a game. Yeah. Started. Three, the, the, the Colts weren't good. They overhauled the roster. The three months ago, the Chargers were a, 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 an amazing team. An amazing team. Today, Unfortunately, we are a good team. Uh, hopefully good enough to sort of survive the early parts of the season uh, to get Russell Okun back week five or six, to get Melvin Gordon showing up week eight or nine fresh and ready. Hopefully Keenan Allen's 100% To get Derwin James. Uh, apparently he is by all accounts. Apparently. No, but I don't we, think. We, we don't know. No, but he's been right. Like, by, by, my, by my beat writers, that's not a. We got concerns. That is one thing I'm not worried about. Get James back by week 10. Yeah, the, you know, things the, the like that. Um, Avoid a Bosa yeah. and Denzel Perriman injury like every year. So, Honestly, I mean, I, 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 this Andrew Luck thing, because we recorded at our AAC preview show the day before it happened. I don't really want to go there. Everything's beaten out of it. On a personal level, I need to admit, and this goes to maybe how crazy I am, and it's already happening again. When I think about it, I start to cry. <laughs> and I start to cry, Pat, because I have Philip Rivers, and every day he walks into my building healthy, thank God, and with the love of the game like a 10-year-old boy. And that is just, I can't tell you, I, I, people could say he's not good enough, he's not this, he's not that. He's everything I can ask for. Um, He's never hurt, and he walks into that building every day like with the enthusiasm and love for the game and to try to make everyone around them better. So, the question, minus six and a half. Well, I'll pick the Chargers, but I feel really uncomfortable about it, and I think we could get got. And thank God we're going to Detroit next week. Just like last week, last year we got got versus the Chiefs and at home, and then we went to Buffalo. And So, I'm taking the Colts plus six and a half. Tim, although he made the Chargers his... Suicide pick. Are you actually taking the Sorry. minus six and a half? T T Pat, stop for a second. He I can see him take the, like, I'll take the Colts and the points. He the did Chargers not make them his suicide pick. He made them his suicide pick, his Super Bowl pick, his MVP pick. But he can't make them. Just you can't put them on a teaser. Under. That would be too now, much. I don't want to encourage this because it, it could feel like that Bucks thing of the shutout. Yeah, versus exactly the where this is going. Like, is years ago. So I don't want to play a role in, in bullying it, but you're such a coward. Oh, yeah. I hear this. Listen, I promised myself I would not tease through zero a single but time. I, I do, but if you're gonna, going to, like I said, if there are 16 games, but no, can you, can you just please explain the logic to me? There are 16 games in week one. It's your favorite one. In it, You have to pick your, and everyone's available to you. You've picked your one game where you think the team is guaranteed to win and make that your suicide pick. You picked the Chargers, yet you won't put them on a teaser that all they would have to do is win. But that is your most confident game that someone will win. I don't yes. understand it. Can you explain that logic to me? I just don't want to. I'm... I don't want to give away the point. It's like, it's like not hitting on 16 against a seven. It's close, but it's a bad strategy. No, you hit 16 uh, against a seven, Tim. No, of course no, you did. it's not. Of course it's... You did. That's my point. It's like, by so are, are you saying that you don't hit 16 the way against you've a seven? talked about the no, chargers is the, the way you have talked about the chargers is this is like the three Oh fastball down the plate game. Yeah. And I mean, teasing through zero is nothing when Tim said this line is off by three points anyway. So and if it ends in a tie, is, the thing is, if it, if it was minus nine, he would tease it down. To I don't want to. You know what? I don't oh, want to listen shit. to it anymore. Fine. I fucked. Done. We fucked. Put up. it on the teaser. It's a good job, Pat. Now, now the Colts are a super lock. We're, it's just we're all... teasing the Chargers down from seven uh, or sorry, from six and a half all the way to plus point five. Fine. Happy. Two, I, listen, in, it's not me who's happy. It's if no, you're, no, no. If, if you're going, if you're going are, to make the, if you're going to make a bold team. call, and you're going to has say this with the utmost confidence, and you're playing things that give you points, it just logically should be on your teaser. Yes, it does. Now, you're, it, it logically it should be. I, in closing, need to say I'm going to name you a player, and he's going to make plays. You this name year. names. Uh, Drew Drew Tranquil. Well, you just got him blacklisted at Hop Sings, Jeff. How do you feel? 
He doesn't have to go there. I'm telling this guy's going to make a play or two that I'm just going to fall in love with. Third round pick who's from a, the Notre Dame. And they have your boy, that the kicker, who's not bad. Not the worst. Most, okay, he's probably like the, a top, he's a top 10 kicker, but he's certainly the most handsome kicker. So let's hope this all works out. And he wears a starter Chargers pullover that I would give a nut for. Um, also, one more thing. If it backfires, I'll, I'll accept responsibility for it. I beg this team, this coach, to just fake something one time. Octavia Spencer and his fake plan? One time. One time. How just... many losses until he's back to being Octavia Spencer? No, It'll happen in the first there. quarter when he tries a 54-yard field goal from fourth and inches and they miss. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> one time. And for those of you that haven't seen it yet, Philip Rivers, I'm telling you, you look at it, it is noticeable shape. Like he is, he's the Phil Mickelson of the NFL. You said it. I didn't. Okay. Next game, Detroit and Arizona, Arizona getting two and a half points at home. Home dogs again against the lions. First time we see Kyler Murray. First time we see Cliff Kingsbury. They are missing Patrick Peterson. I hear that's a problem. Their defense sucks. And we don't know if Kingsbury or Kyler Murray is any good. I worry about a Cam Newton situation when he came out and threw 400 yards. Uh, it could be like or that. Or maybe just Pat, Matt Patricia is just overwhelmed by this newfangled offense that's coming at him. And he doesn't have any ideas. But it just seems to me like Detroit's defense is actually pretty good. They're going to be able to get to Kyler Murray pretty effectively, I think. They're at least going to contain him to the pocket. This is the NFL now. This isn't bit beaten up. A big 12 defenses. I think the Lions are going to run the ball. Kenny Galladay is going to go mental here. I like the Lions a lot in this game on the road. You said everything I kind of wanted to say. Uh, sign me up for the Dolphins. You mean the Lions? Uh, yeah, the Do Lions. Dolphins, Lions, teaser. <laughs> <laughs> Prove me wrong, Arizona. I'm excited for that, too. Uh, yeah. If it's great, I'll be entertained by it. But I've got no problem watching that thing just blow up in their face. I do think the kid is going to be... Fine. Listen, I've been more wrong about things I didn't want to see happen. I hope Arizona's kind of good. It'd be exciting to see yeah, them be I, good. I, I but agree. I just, I'm not feeling it yet, at least. Uh, so, round of Detroit's even for the coin. Tim, you. No, I'm going to take the Cardinals. I'm going to take the home dog. I don't. They think they win 99% Detroit... of the time. No, I just don't think the, I don't think Detroit should be laying points into anybody on the road right now. Uh, in two and a, I, I, I think it's an interesting spot, right? Because. The Lions have a ton of problems and they're not a great team. And the Cardinals are a big mystery. Uh, it's the sort of game where I wouldn't bet it because I think there's just way too many questions. But when in doubt, I'm going to grab the points and take the home team. That is that is the extent of my thought. It's a, it's a play against Detroit, not a play on Arizona. I just see <laughs> them just mucking this game up. Maybe. Sure. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked by it. I just think there's a little bit of value taking the dog here. That's all. All right. Giants at Dallas. Dallas is favored by seven points at home. 45 and a half is the game total. As we record, there are reports that Ezekiel Elliott is going to sign, but that has not happened as of yet. They're just simply reports. As and even if he does, what's he going to play? 10, 11 carries? Like, he I, won't be that I, important. In I don't know, but let's say Zeke signs. Maybe not at all. Maybe not at all. Maybe, Maybe not at all. Yeah, like he's unplayable in Like he's in just going to give the guy all that get 50 guaranteed you're going to just throw them out there without camp. They might just yeah, eat it and I, say I, we're playing the Giants. I would expect probably a 50-50 share between him and Pollard, if that's the case. If that. If that. Yeah, yeah, if I, that, I, I would say, say 50, 50 is a ceiling for his week. Yeah, line. I agree you, know what, you know what he's getting, though, in this game? All the goal line touches. Three touchdowns oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, Zeke sure, on sure. nine carries. Uh, like, uh, we're paying him all this money. You're, that's the one thing. If they're going to pay him all this money to make him the highest paid running back, he's playing. I think... The Giants might be the play here. I think this game ends up being Dallas. Being Dallas close. 484 to nothing. Okay. That's my pick. Giants lose, but they cover in a weird close game. Tim? I have learned my lesson from last year when I backed the Giants way too often. And I would have beat you by 10 or 15 more games had I just not kept going to the well for the Giants. So uh, until I see something that makes me think that New York is any good. I'm going to take Dallas here. Yeah, the coin is going to take the Giants along with you. It's the first game that Tim and I have agreed on, that you and the coin are on the same I, I I don't think I'm going to bet this game. It's not even the Sunday nighter, so I'll be preoccupied. But seven points probably goes up to eight. Don't forget, Jason Witten, at least three touchdowns. I mean, I don't have the direct numbers on this, but I think he averages three touchdowns a game against the Giants. That's at least my head cannon on that one. 
I, I choose not to look at the actual facts. I choose to be like Tim and live my truth, and I'll just make stuff up. And, you know, in my mind, that's a fact, Tim. But Dallas Sneaky has a very good defense, and I think that's the overlooked part about all this. And it doesn't matter Dallas really. Dallas is a darn good team last year, and they still have most of those players around. Like, Dallas is known to be trifled with. And the Giants aren't good. No, they're it, really bad. They're really bad. Tim believes in Daniel Jones, though. I think Jones will actually be a pretty darn good quarterback, but uh, he's not playing. So I was a big fan of him. I was disappointed that he went there because I historically just don't want to even like the Giants. What week? Until we get the Jones, Jones calling Daniel Jones. I don't know. They're so Jones, they're Daniel so gu- Jones, they're so the gutless now. over in there. In their game now. <laughs> they're so gutless over there. I I have no <laughs> idea. Tim has no guts left either. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Excuse me. Just a cough, though, right? Yeah, it's humid. I don't think we need to spend any more time on this. Next game. The Niners traveling across the country to play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tim's pick to be in the Super Bowl. Is that what it was, Tim? No, uh, to win the division. This won't be the last time we see this matchup this season. Oh, my God. Didn't you bet the I under the Niners, Niners to make the playoffs, and oh, I picked you? the Buccaneers to win the division. All right. Well, the, Buc- the Bucks are favored by one. The over under is 50 in this game. One of the higher totals of the week. I like the Niners just because everything that came out about them during the preseason was just all negative. Jimmy G sucks. He can't yeah. complete a pass. Jimmy anymore. G's intentionally trying to make very difficult throws in the preseason. Yeah, was the, the, the he diff- got intercepted three times in practice. He's the worst. And like they have no receivers. Dante Pettis, he sucks, but now he's listed as their number one. You know, Bosa is already dealing with an injury. Just it, I think that they're better. I think it's a high scoring game, but like Tampa's defense is horrible. <coughs> horrible. And the Niners probably put up like 28 points in this game. That's probably good enough for me. I say they cover. I like the Buccaneers. I like the Buccaneers in this game. I would certainly hope so. Well, no, I mean, like, I like both teams are playoff teams. So, well, you have one of the, you have one at eleven wins, and this has to be a game they need to win. They don't need to win. It's week one. You don't need to win anything. However, I do think they are going to win. I think this is the first game that we see. Obviously, what Bruce Arians has sort of cooked up with that Tampa offense, which is, of course, just laden like a Christmas tree full of talent. Uh, I'm going to say, based on what the looks of Bruce Arians, looks like he's been cooking up some diabetes over the time that he's been off from the NFL. I my f- don't, don't think you're correct about that. I think Bruce Arians basically looks the way he's always looked. Now he looks, uh, I'd say, a good, I don't know, 20 pounds. Maybe he's on the Diet Cokes like you. This is going to be a real oh. money game for me. Oh, really? You have a distinct take on this? Yeah, I'm going to bet Tampa. I think the spread is wrong. I think they should be getting a couple more points at home. They sh- oh, you think so? Yeah, I, I do too. I think this game should at least be a three. I think it's foolish that it's not at least three, and I think it probably should be three and a half. Oh, you guys are going to be... Jameis got benched twice last year because he sucks. Remember that. New quarterback. I drafted him. It's, it's, not a, it's not a new quarterback. He's legitimately the same guy. New quarterback coach, I said. New team. Uh, new offensive plans. Are they going to be affected by the hurricane, their families and stuff? Well, Tampa is on the west coast of Florida, so they're probably the least affected of those uh, Florida teams let's not forget tampa's offense was pretty good last year it was fantastic last year and so it's it, get is, better it's good so it was fantastic last year it's gonna get even better this year well it got sue and yeah made a draft pick for the linebacker we like yeah they vita v is they, a they, good they, player. they got vita v is not a great player and also they got sue to replace mccoy yeah. and he's not as good they as drafted via via over derwin ago. james is an epic miscalculation he still he's a good player he's not a derwin james he's still a good player what you need to do on the defensive line is really load up against the run that's what you want to be doing. This should be fine. If, that, if you're in a division with teams like Carolina and New Orleans, yes, that's exactly what you want to be doing because that's what those teams do. So, so what you do is you play against two teams, basically. Well, you play them four times a quarter of your season right there. Actually, yeah. When and, and you're you probably not going to beat them anyway. Smart general managers build their team for the competition they play the most frequently, not mm-hmm. whatever. You know, that, that's just how it has to be done. That's how good teams win games. Now, you see, I would say the Patriots strategy is just trying to be the best team. That tends to work out. Imagine, like, constructing your team to beat the fucking Jets every year. You're like, oh, I have a player who's good. This is going to work out. I have no idea what point you think you're making here. No, you, if you're actually going to be a good team, like, you can try to construct your team to be better than the Saints and be better than Carolina, but to think they're one-dimensional teams is asinine. I never said they're one-dimensional, but that is their principal method of trying to score on the offensive side of the ball. Both those teams are run first. Those are the two best they're, teams. They're right? not. They're not run first teams. Both teams pass more than they run. 
So they're running, they're running back first teams. Perhaps I should put it that way. That rely that that are good because they both have good quarterbacks. And that's the big difference between those teams and Tampa Bay. Well, I think Tampa mm. Bay's quarterback is just as good. Just as good as Drew Brees. James got him coming just as good as Cam run, Newton. Runner up to Philip Rivers in the MVP race. But don't forget Agreed. that he said, but don't forget that he said that Jameis would win MVP either. So he's making multiple picks now. No, he kind of bet he said uh, He said, Don't forget that I said it. That's exactly what he said. If Jameis wins MVP, I'll give him credit, even Thank though he backed off. I appreciate off that. Yeah. But that's okay. exactly what he's looking for. Because when Jameis has a horrible year, he doesn't want to be held to that. Yeah, he doesn't want to be held so accountable. So it's a win. For when he they can't lose. Or something. He can't lose, and he effectively, I guess, pulled it off. Because I'll give him credit. All right, I like the Niners here. I like Jimmy G here. Sunday night game: Pittsburgh at the New England Patriots, the defending Super Bowl Banner champions. drop. I saw they're wearing these awesome patches indicating they're world champions they're favored by five and a half points at home 51 is the over under let's go to the coin first what does the coin say the coin is taking the pittsburgh steelers tim do you agree with the coin yes i think the steelers win by or sorry the patriots win by three so i think the i'm going to take the steelers but it's not a game i'm going to bet for the most part it's gonna be a high scoring game very high scoring I think it's going to be like a 34 31 type of game that the Patriots win late. I, I, I think both, both teams have their problems on the back end. Uh, I think both teams obviously have good quarterbacks. They have good receivers. Uh, there's every reason to think these, these two teams could play again in the play. Uh, could, could in, uh, in theory play again uh, in the postseason if the Patriots kind of get lucky and make their way into the playoffs. I think that it's going to be a good game, be a high scoring game. I expect the Patriots to win close. So you're going to give me more than a field goal. I'm going to take the Steelers. And of course, the last time they opened with Super Bowl patches on their jerseys, they got uh, pistol whipped by the Chiefs. What happened by the end of the year? They lost in the Super Bowl. So they made the Super Bowl. And lost. Hey, they're, they're terrible, though. They're bad. <laughs> Won't make playoffs this year. I worry about their offensive line. It does seem like they've gone out and addressed a lot of these problems, but... That could be a real. Did weakness. they address the problems? They at least went out and got bodies. Like the it's better than having okay. It's, 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 the protection. I, I wonder. I honestly wonder. The Patriots are in like a life or death situation at center, and the Bills threw them a body. Yeah. Do you think the Bills, if they thought that body was anything, like the Bills, were, I'd be like, oh, this guy sucks. You could have him. No, but now, granted, of, Bill Belichick one of, one and their the, O line coach. One of will, the best ways to beat your opponents is to make sure that the other opponents in your division have the tools to knock off the other teams in the division, Jeff. So giving them a good center helps. Them I'm the going to bet Pittsburgh here. I might actually, act, I'm sorry. I'm going to pick Pittsburgh here. I might actually bet it. Uh, I hope it gets to six. Can it get to six? Cause history tells us six is a, Oh my um, goodness. It's the late game. Of course it is. People will be chasing their losses and towards kickoff. Yes, it is. Yeah, oh fairly. yeah. But I don't know what side of the, the side the public comes down. Oh, on this we're one. all coming in on the Patriots. You yeah, know, you, you, no, that is not true. No, whatsoever. There's just as much of a Patriots the Patriots at home coming off the Super the Bowl. Steelers the Steelers are the most popular team in I the NFL. They are. I, yes, but, they are. But I want to say that I think unequivocally this off season, I think the Pittsburgh's good. I think I picked them to win the division, or you know, That's maybe they'll be tiebreakered with the Browns. However, the tiebreaker goes, in my opinion. Uh, I think they are being slept on. I think this is the first year they're not like being talked now, about. Every they're single person I hyped. hear talk about the Steelers is the Steelers are being slept on. At some point, they're not being slept on anymore. Everyone likes them. No, find the Browns me someone are the team find that me everyone some, likes. Find me one person who bet the under on the Steelers this year. Find me them. They don't exist. Everyone bet the over. I'm just saying the Steelers in their own mind have created this you all like the Browns thing. Sure. I like Pittsburgh. In if this you like Pittsburgh game. plus five and a half, you should bet Pittsburgh outright. At no, because I think it's going to be a three point game. Well, I agree. If you think it's going to be a three point game, it's worth taking the over two to one on it. No, I'll if it's just. It's a take, three point I'll, game. That's a coin flip that can go either way. And you're getting plus two ten. I'm not betting it at all. But you, I would t- do you I, see what I'm saying here, Jack? I no. do. I, I I don't mind the money line. I think sort of once you get over three, but in front of six, you could argue you're not really gaining anything. If you think you're going to win. If you think it's going to be... If you think no, I mean, not from is, a point spread perspective. Yeah. Eh, well, you know, it's wonky stuff happens. Like, Always. Remember, remember when the Steelers started like, going for two all the time, but then they stopped going for two all the time? I bet... Based what, on whether listen, or not it it's worked. a bad omen for me. I bet one freaking college game on Saturday because I'm boring AF and I'm just home and it's Saturday night and I'm a sucker for a TV game when I got nothing to do. I bet Louisville plus 18 and a half. Well, that's a nice one. So I got Oregon plus three and a half. I didn't... 
just randomly decided, okay, I'm going to take the points. I picked Oregon, Oregon in my final four. I thought they were going to be really good. They, they, <laughs> Did you know that going into it? No. They, <laughs> Pat, I don't know if you know this. They were up one with like 30 seconds left. And Auburn was in field goal range, like on the 27-yard line. And uh, Oregon didn't even have timeouts or anything. And they threw a bomb to the end zone. And they got the touchdown. I'm thinking, like, I'm enjoying the game. I'm, I'm going to kick a field goal. I'm just enjoying the last minute of a football game. And this freshman. Well, oh, when, you should have known. Tim Pickman would be in the final four. So I, that's just like, and that happens. I'm like, oh, that's such a bad omen for football season. So you guys so can. This is the late game. So the five o'clock games are just bad. For four, week o'clock, four, four o'clock games. Tim. Sure. No, They're Tim, bad, though. But you, you will attest to this because you're sort of one of those guys that notices that these cares things. about these things, which no one else does. I am. I would bet anything. This is the most amount of four o'clock games week one I've had in my life. It, it, well, usually CBS used to have the U.S. Now, open. Yes. So they, so they didn't have the afternoon. And I know for a fact because one o'clock is it's a thing. Sorry. Week yeah. one is a thing. It is a thing. As I spoke about off the top, it's it's it's. It's if you like football and you're not with your friends week one, like get a life. <laughs> oh, I should tell people out there, share this show around. Sure. Retweet it. Tell your friends. No, I, this is the show that people should be watching. I just, yeah, no, I, I, I'm kind of dead. Like even my wife, I got two kids at home. My wife is fantastic, but she knows, listen, there might be weeks two, three, four, five where I don't get out of the house. I'll be watching at home. But week one is a, is a thing. It's an event. Yes. It is an event. My wife. One of the best. People say she's some of the best wives around. <laughs> um, so I'm picking New England to cover the spread here, by the way. I, I, just my very quick yes. take is I want to see how this offense acts without Antonio Brown and with only Juju out there is the focal point. We Always the saying that, that Belichick will take away the thing that you do best. So if they take away Juju in this game, then it's going to be on the hands of Ben and James Conner to pound it up and up and up, and I think the Patriots can win it. They were only seven games at one o'clock on Sunday. That's a small number. I know for a fact because normally I, we got to leave. Yeah, like, usually they boost the two o'clock games and then the five games are. Stop are, it! With two o'clock, yeah, you're games. really alienating the audience that I just told to like share the show around because people are like, "What the fuck is wrong with this guy?" Not that they didn't think that already. But Where I no Tim just oh. Monday night, which includes two pieces of Tim's free money teaser because he only. Oh has four yes, it does. Car. I'm a um, and, and my super lock is coming out of the Monday night game. Okay, so Houston at New Orleans, the early one, minus seven for the Saints at home. 53 is the total. It makes this easy on myself. I take the Saints, minus seven. I don't think, even with Tunsil, super high Tunsil, weed high Tunsil, I just don't think that the Texans can block this pass rush coming at them. And Hopkins will still get his against Lattimore, but it's not going to be one of those insane games that we see. Kenny Stills is new to the offense. Duke Johnson's new to the offense. Carlos Hyde is new to the offense. You might not have Kiki. So, Well, they're lucky they're playing a team that will not be ready to play. You don't think the Saints, is, Saints are going to be ready to play? I don't. History tells no, us they no, won't I be. I, I, History I tells us fun. they won't be ready to play. They might win the game because they're the better I, team. I, 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 think the touchdown, I think the touchdown is, is too many points. Oh, you, guys have, you guys have fun point. back in the, the, the hot, sleepery Texans. That's I'm not, gonna be fun. No, I, I, Watson I said, might get sacked seven listen, times. I'm not the guy putting it on my teaser, betting real money on it. Because again, like the, the Chiefs, this can go the other way. Right, you bet against. No, the I don't think it can. The Texans can score at at will as well. Uh, I think that's silly. It so yeah, can't happen. Jeff. <laughs> You're going to give me two touchdowns on the teaser. Whatever does me in on the teaser will not be this game. My teaser may be dead by Monday night. <laughs> this, this will not be me. Remember, I said that. Uh, I'm going to write that down. Did you tell me to write that down? Sure. Just telling you, I'm not in the least concerned about this. Shit. All right, so Houston plus 14 going on the six-team teaser. Here so, comes Pat's alternate, like, New Orleans minus 12 and a half yeah. <laughs> spread. Pat. New Orleans minus 30 <laughs> alternate spread. Uh, so you're taking Houston, Jeff. You're taking Houston? Yeah, I think it's too many points. The, you know, sometimes these really great teams, uh, granted their division is tough, so they can't sort of play it like the Patriots and sleepwalk through September. But I don't know. I'm here to believe it time and time well, again. Saints at home last year screwed us. You could go back like eight years. This team is not ready to start a season. No, that Tampa game last year. I could go in. back to RG3 on his butt from the eight-yard yeah, line. that's right. Like, I'm telling RG3 you. RG3 was so good, though. That was amazing. Um, but I, I'm just telling you, this team is not ready 
it doesn't mean they're not going to be Sam a great Bradford team. Two years ago, carved them up on a Sunday. I, I night. do think they night. can regress because I do believe the way their seasons ended two years in a row. If they have go on to have the season everyone thinks that they're going to have, I will give them more credit than anyone else will. No, see, because I think you're misreading the situation too. A lot of people are on the Saints are not going to live up. Like it's almost like what you think people are saying about the Steelers, which they're not. People are kind of like middling on well, the Saints. Uh, yeah, because you do not have your season end two straight years like it did for them, and just be able to get off the mat like everything's hunky dory. We'll Prove see. me wrong. They, they persevered once and got back to the spot. Let's see if they can do yeah, it again. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And I love coach and I love quarterback. And it's an easy combination blindly. If you want to bet this thing, you just go by those two metrics. You'll bet them a lot. And you'll probably come October, start winning money on them. But for September, I'm staying away. I'm betting the other side, especially here. Also, this is the biggest gap of the week between who is a good coach and who is a bad coach. Oh, my God. I forgot. Don't forget well, I mean, about that. That is, that is, that is I'm not bad. I won't bet real. Uh, I don't want to bet real. I'm not betting <laughs> real money start. on Bill O'Brien. I almost wish the Saints were playing like the Bengals. Do you think? Because this is a, this is a game to make money. Is Bill O'Brien actively being a bad GM so it takes away from how bad he is at coaching? The people don't, don't even talk about that anymore? Just really bad at everything he does. He's not getting paid. I don't paid. know how guy, he still has a job. The guy gets paid, so he's doing something right. Who see? Is he taking advantage of the owner died and there's just like an influx kind of at the top, like John Elway is? <clears throat> Although Elway has his history with the Broncos and won them a Super Bowl as a person. Yeah, he, he signed Peyton Manning. No, I understand that, but the, but his track record last three or four years is not appealing. And if it wasn't John Elway, and if Mister Bolin didn't have all that bad Alzheimer's and there wasn't that fight between the, the state and the trusts of the kids uh, that there might be someone in there to run the team. But John Elway is essentially the owner of the team as that, as that team is in litigation as that franchise is in um, litigation. I was trying to say, and I, I, I don't know how don't Bill O'Brien gets know. by because the owner died there. And sometimes that buys these rats running the teams a few extra Some years. Some people just get real lucky and just fall constantly into success uh, despite bad decisions. He just happens to be one of these people. Well, Tim it always does point out that the, the best thing you can do is just wait by the back of the train until they start throwing Do you remember out. when... Well, I, did, I, I was able to get off the train when I like watched three throws, but remember when Christian Hackenberg was going to be amazing because Bill O'Brien taught him? Tim still thinks that. Custy, I, I don't. Custy winner, Christian Hackenkest. Last game. Happy it's not me. Is anyone going to stay up to watch this gong show? Denver. I'll probably watch some of it. It's being that you're in the weirdest time zone possible, this game starts at 11.30 p.m. your time, 15, Tim. 11.15. 11.15. You're in bed before that. Yes, I am. This is the sort of game where you turn it on, you go to sleep, and then like you wake up at like 3 a.m., have a smoke and watch like the last bit of the sec- of the fourth quarter or something. What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, pardon me. Gus has got those night cravings. I, I'm not a cigarette smoker. Well, I am, and I don't wake up in the middle of the night and needing a cigarette. Even the things I like to smoke, I never literally woken up at 3 a.m., gone like gotten a drink of water, and then decided it's time. You hit a quick vape pen, went back to sleep. That's I don't get it. it some people got issues. That's, that's, that's where that cough comes from, the 3 a.m. stings. <laughs> so Oakland's favored by a point at home. 43 is the over-under. I don't have a huge take on this game, but I think that Denver's better, and I think that Denver wins, so I'll take Denver plus one. Yeah, I'm just going to go with um, the pass rush causing so much trouble. That's where I'm at with this I'll team. buy into it. Uh, I And I don't know whether it's just – I do not for a second believe – it was an entertainment narrative from the Raiders to just be crazy for hard no, knocks. I, I don't know. Antonio Brown loves the spotlight. I, I don't I don't know. I, I'll buy into this let's watch this thing be an unmitigated disaster. The only the only appealing thing about the Raiders franchise to me is Is when they're appealing Derek Carr off the ground. <laughs> I was gonna say is that Tiger Woods loves them. Yeah, he also loves Rafa Nadal because he probably bet a million dollars on him to win. That's pretty good. There are like seven gifts from that. There is. The Tiger was good stuff at the U.S. Open. Uh, I know Tim's definitely taking Oakland because he loves Oakland, thinks they're great. Uh, he has. I win- think they're good, and you're giving me Joe teaser, Flack on the road in division. Now, I had seen this game at pick for most of the week, so I had had been taking the Raiders up to seven. Uh, mm-hmm. I see now it's to one. So, so you got the plus a- six. 
Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, I I'm almost gonna... I almost will give him the, the fucking No, thing. no, we're doing it based on what we have right now. But nevertheless, yeah, it's Joe Flacco on the road in an absolute madhouse where it's the last season. Those fans are going to be you know, the Those last fans time are gone. checked out. Yeah, the I'm, they're time, out. They're gone. The they're out. They're out. Arch There's no madhouse. It's it over. Is the, the last time their arch rival is ever coming into the building, they want to, to destroy them in that last game. That team will be fired up. Gruden will have them fired up. I think it's a, it's a big game for the Raiders. I Here's think the, the problem. Raiders Gruden's going to like up. give them a, a speech, but that type of stuff that like, that's all it is. This isn't a movie. Yeah. That's all. Gruden, no, I, 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 that's I all Gruden it. is to me in 2019 Plus, is a speech. And, and if so, you don't win week one with the speech, it's just over. You used your plus, speech. You know, it's aesthetics. It's I mean, dead. Jeff, I'm sure, appreciates this too. Like seeing them play with the infield in the football field during the game is, is so cool. Like that's one of the reasons just step and watch this game. Because like after this year, we won't get to see that ever again. Good, because it's ridiculous. I love it. I love it. I think no, it's the really Chargers good. had to play with it forever. I didn't like it. It sucks. All right. Uh, so it's nostalgic. No, receivers don't want to die for balls on that. It's not good. So Denver for everyone except for Tim, who's taking Oakland minus one. Yeah. All I right. think I was very square. Like, I think I have so many games where I'm with three people and someone is alone. But I'm very rarely, like, alone. I have a few where I'm by myself. Yeah, so I scared. noticed that. I noticed that. But yeah. I, don't, I, I didn't, like, stand on any hills here. But you don't want to side with the coin because it doesn't watch the games. Well, someone tweeted us a picture of the coin watching the games. Maybe the coin will come with me and watch the games this week. It's not like I'm going to spend cash. So he has no. You're going to mobile order? Yeah, I'm going to mobile order and walk in and just start eating. It'll be great. Did that with some sous vide egg bites at Starbucks today, Tim. It was great. All I had to do was walk over and eat it and leave. I went and picked it up, brought it back to the office. Boom. Yeah, well, thankfully the people were on my side. In fact, I deserve some credit for that. Let me talk about it later. You deserve credit that one in for, seven. For winning, that, for winning that poll, yeah. <laughs> the, the only person alive who gets... It turned out to be 13% of people. 14. 13% of people on his side. He claims it's a victory. I wish I, wish I could have brought my grade seven report card home to Daddy Tim. Yeah, Daddy the way Tim. He, the way he... <laughs> 63%, Jeffrey. A D. D for delightful. It's so uh, good. Uh, super long. Actually, we'll do Survivor first. Uh, Tim... After his improbable perfect season where he won zero dollars because he didn't enter. Although Tim likes to talk the big game about having the perfect season when it came to actually entering his picks in a survivor pool. He did not enter the same picks, therefore he won zero. And as the gods have cursed him, as he's already cursed, but he has now been eliminated two consecutive years in the first week in the survivor pool. Well, Tim, it won't happen three years in a row. Well, you're taking the Chargers over the Colts? Yeah, the Chargers are definitely winning this week. I'll, I I'll take I am taking the Seahawks over the Bengals, Jeff. At three, oh Seahawks, Seahawks okay. for the su Survivor, yeah, right. Seahawks. <laughs> Jeff was already thinking super locks. Super locks of the week. Let's uh, lock them in right now. Our best bets, which are usually not good. Jeff is the best two consecutive years at super locks. I guess if we recorded a day ago or two days ago, it's stone cold would be Carolina, and I don't want to overreact to the point, but this seems like a big half. Um, I'm going to move off Carolina and oh my God, I'm going to go with Tim's Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tampa Bay minus one, Tim, who are you taking that uh, Houston plus seven Houston plus seven. I mean, at least as he swears that game won't screw him. He does <laughs> at that one thirty seven. 43 of the show. He said, if there's no one game that's not going to cost me, it's definitely this game. <laughs> So I have it down to, I really like you Detroit. Take, you know what you're doing. I like Detroit. Now, I mean, I actually kind of feel more confident in Detroit than I do in Indianapolis. <coughs> take the Dolphins. No, I don't. I, that's just more of like, I, I think that they cover, but that could go horribly, horribly yeah. wrong. Uh, Dallas against the Giants, too. I like that one a lot. Mm. And I kind of like New Orleans against Houston, to be perfectly honest with you. Go, go against you on the super lock. I will take... You did proclaim Dallas was going to win 350 to nothing. Or I believe I believe it was 497 to nothing. But There you go. I think you're sort of fraud committed. <laughs> well, no, I, I think that the, the Colts have a very good chance of winning outright as well. Uh, and I'm not asking even them to win. I'm just asking them to keep it close. So you have to weigh those two things. Uh, yeah, I'll take the Colts. The Colts plus six and a half as my super lock of the week. I'm sorry, Jeff. 
He said they couldn't lose. He picked them in Survivor. Isn't this just setting up for them to lose by one? I they'll take a, back. They'll have a field goal to win the game with their fantastic kicker and his great starter, Jack and Hillshank. I just hope I take back my desire for your bounce back season. I need you to, to, to sort of hit a hit a wall here. Maybe this is like the golfer who bogeys the first hole and then shoots <laughs> minus seven. Maybe they need yeah. a good kick in the teeth to start the year. It's a good number. I, uh, I, if it wasn't the Chargers, you'd be on it. I wouldn't be my super luck, but it has many of the layers that that correlate to me betting a game that'll do it on the pat mayo experience oh, i don't want to lose that one pat i'd like oh, i wanted to say it would also be great for the jets to be fan i know like you want them to be bad if the jets literally win i think the bills will be fine but i'm just saying if the jets win 42 nothing and he can the show we could have oh the no, next th- day, no no this only the cut ups from th- it this only goes one of two ways like i actually hope the jets are 14 and 2 or 1 and 15 those are the two best scenarios for me as it pertains to this show with the Jets because it'll just be a lunatic every week. I would love to almost see them have the season like that Viking season where they went 15-1 and one and they were going to the Super Bowl and Gary Anderson missed the field goal. <laughs> like that would be the optimal outcome really to the season. Oh my God, I have to cancel my plane tickets to Miami. <laughs> well, they were 15-1. and one. Like I'd already have them booked at that point. How many games would they have to win to start the season before you bought your Super Bowl tickets? And no, not play? till the playoffs. I need to see how the playoffs shake out. Whether the Park Avenue is trying to screw us by making us play an early game in the playoffs when we should be playing a late game or something. I That's not even up to them. That's up to the networks. Oh, they haven't. You don't think they can influence the networks? Get which get please. But you're the Jets. You are the preeminent American a- Football a- Conference a- franchise. franchise. So you would be in the premier spot for TV. Should I recap my free money? Uh, I have it here for you. Tell me if anything is wrong. A six-team, seven-point teaser. Bullied from five to six. Not bullied. He wants to make claims, and he should put them on. If Fair. he wants to be outrageous and steadfast about what he thinks is going to happen, then the thing that he is the most confident in really should appear on a teaser. I, I agree. I agree. Logic, 100% sound. Atlanta, plus 11. Jacksonville, plus 10.5. Seattle, minus 2.5. The Chargers, plus 0.5. Houston plus 14, Oakland plus 6. And I've been told that Houston can is the absolute freest money on this teaser. No, I'm not saying they're the absolute freest money. It's just they are not going to lose. That is one I'm, I'm the least scared about. All right, so that is the teaser. You can check out the cheat sheet up on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash the PMA. Got DraftKings picks. I got all the picks for you. I do want to thank Paul Shaughnessy behind the camera. Paul, uh, a- any thoughts from week one? Anything you're, you're being swayed on here? I've got a draft tonight. I'm definitely not drafting Des- Deshaun Watson after what he said about the Texans in game one. That's I think true. he's he going down right away week one. Pat and I have a draft tonight too, and I think he's going to do a really good job. I have two drafts at the same time, so I'm probably going to do very poorly in both of them. Jeff oh, Feinberg, been... you can follow on Twitter at GFeinberg17. You can follow Paul at Paul Shag. I'd really like to thank the coin for sticking around this year. I mean, I thought the coin would have outgrown us after winning the pick and pool last no. year, but it's back. It's ready to defend its crown. I'd like to thank me for being here. And, I like uh, how it has such a great year and it doesn't gloat like Tim probably thing, would. He's going to do the thing with the camera. Sorry. You're worse than fucking him. No, I'm not. You are for just. What do you mean the thing to the camera? Your clothes? You mean when I. You're it, shutting <coughs> down the show. I didn't know that. We're shutting down jabbering. the show. I'm shutting down the You're show. Thank you, everyone. And I'm just trying to really, really build it up so I can thank the coin and you and Paul. I can thank all these people and Tim and Gust. Tim and Gust. <laughs> That's not my name. See, it needs to be on the solo one of me. And when you talk, yeah. Paul, because he's a good director, cuts to the two, and then I can't do it, and then it makes no sense. I, I can't see the producer signals. You can see the TV. It's right there. You look at yourself doing your hair. I actually the don't. You <laughs> I, can th- see the video. I don't. Oh, I can't. Jeff, you I will make a super look at cut. yourself. What? You're looking, oh, you're, you constantly look at yourself. I have a super cut of the Custies where you do it at least 25 you're times. Always doing I'm not your looking hair, at myself. Looking, you're doing though. this. But that's what I'm doing. <laughs> just do your clothes, fuck. <laughs> oh, you're sounding like Gabe now. I like it. Follow everyone on Twitter. If you follow me for the hundred dollar giveaway on Instagram, uh, if you follow me at the PME, like, give it a quick heart, 
to the video that goes up for the show and leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section. You people out there are going to drop for a hundred DK dollars. Other than that, you can smash the like button for the video, leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section of this video, uh, and tell me which spread you like the best in week one. You're going to drop for 20 DK bucks. If you leave a five-star review after subscribing to the Pat Mayo Experience Atio podcast with your DraftKings handle and something you like about the show, then you too will be in a drop for 20 DK bucks. Winners announced every Monday morning on the Pat Mayo Experience. I'm Pat Mayo. I want to thank you all for watching. It's fun to have football back in our lives, right? I'll see you next time. Pat Mayo Experience! Experience!